glorify me. Then he says, call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. The shocking scripture that the Lord led me to is verse 16. Read if you are a Christian. 16 please. Go ahead and read. Are we Bible students? If God does not open your eyes to this thing, bar, you won't see anything. Believe me, revelation is his spirit. If there is no amount of cramming scripture and Bible study that gives you the spirit of revelation, God has to open the eyes of men. But unto the wicked, the word wicked there is not sinners. The idea there is unto those who are determined not to walk with me. He said, what right have you? We are talking about right here. We are talking about a legal access. What right have you to recite my statutes? I shall not die. I shall not die. I, will, I won't be poor. I will be rich. He said, what right have you to recite it? Everyone is talking, just talking. I won't be sick and you are dying. I won't be poor. It's clear you are getting poor. There is a mystery. Confession is a powerful provision but under certain conditions. See, let me tell you something. Half truth can destroy you like a lie. It can do the exact same thing a lie does to you. That's why Satan is not afraid of using half truth. Because it makes no difference to him. It says, what right have you to recite my status? So everyone is confessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. Everyone is confessing. Oh, I can't get into trouble. I, I can't have accident. It's impossible. And you are watching yourself die per second per second. What right have you? What right have you? That's the point you should cycle media, not do wicked. What right have you? To recite my status or take my covenant or pledge on your lips. Talk is cheap, brothers and sisters. But you see, the reason why many believers mock themselves in the presence of the world is we do not understand the systems of the kingdom. Say the systems of the kingdom. So we come around a dimension of reality and we mock ourselves. And the painful part is we are doing what is right, but the result is not there because it's not complete. God is obsessed with completion. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience, if and only when your obedience is complete. What right have you to be exempted? When there is a plague that is released upon people, what right have you to be exempted? This one is not free. What right? That means there is an authorization based on certain things that are done. Are we together now? What right have you to say a bike will not kill me? What right have you to say tomorrow I will still wake up alive? You know many made boastful statements like that and they are no more today. Many have said in the name of Jesus, if by the end of this year I'm not rich except God has not called me. The years have passed. Nothing has happened. Exemption is a possibility that can be accessed by the saints. Exemption. Exemption. The quality of being prevented from experiencing woes. The quality of being prevented from experiencing the pain, the tragedy of people. The quality of being exempted or being taken away from defeat. The quality of perpetual triumph. Not necessarily the quality of not being in trouble. But the quality of an assured escape as guaranteed as God himself. Is there such a provision in the kingdom? If yes, 
What are the keys to walking in such a reality? I have taught us here again and again that our lives are defined by the mysteries we have access to. So two people can walk upon the earth and their experiences will be the same. Remember the scripture I read to you. The problem is never the foundation. The problem is never that you are not born again. But the quality of our life. The same way you have two students in a class taught by the same teacher. So the problem is not the teacher. In the same institution. So the problem is not the institution. Under the same condition, the problem is not the condition. But then their results will differ and sometimes sharply. That's how it is in life. Two believers, two individuals, two families, two personalities can be within the same environment. Yet, their results will differ. Why? Because the Bible says that you arise and shine only when your light comes. The light is available to everyone, but those who are interested in accessing it and complying with the conditions and the terms. If you're with me, say Amen. amen. What right have you? You are making a boastful statement. Whereas you are seeing what is happening in this nation and you dare have the gods to say it's your year of trial. What right? You are watching kidnapping and assassination happening. You are watching, you're watching people being poisoned. Just air killing people. You can't sue the air to court. You are watching demons sit on people's destinies. You hear people tell you they went to bed. And look at the testimony of, of that dear lady. Went to bed and woke up with physical marks. Not spiritual marks, physical marks on her body. Question, what, what stops you from being a victim? I want to ask you a question. What if as you are sitting down right now, somebody is chanting your name in the shrine? You can't stop them from saying it. But the question I have is, what right do you have? To say I will not be a victim of it. What rights do you have to claim that you will prosper? I'm doing business. It's a joke. It's a big joke. I have an uncle who is rich. Another big joke. The mystery of exemption. Job 22 verse 19. I'm a student of the Bible. I love the Bible. I don't read the Bible to feel spiritual. I am very serious about my work with God and my study of Scripture. I have found it to be the most reliable book. I've read many books in my life. It's so disappointing to know many of them are useless to my destiny. And now that I've found the one that is useful, say, I found your word and I did eat it. Right? And it became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. 29, not 19. Job 22, 29. I want to share with you a few things from the depth of my heart that can exempt men. Go ahead and prophesy to yourself as you read this scripture. One to read. When men, like they are saying now across the nations of the earth, when men, like they are saying now across the continent of Africa, in Nigeria, even in this city, when men are cast down, the Bible didn't say they say they are cast. They are not confessed. It is their reality. When men are cast down, something you will engage will bring you to a point where for you there will be a lifting up, a difference, an exemption, a separation. Write this down, please, everyone. It's important to come to the Lord's house, not just with a Bible. Please always have a Bible, but always have a good material to write or whatever device you are using, but make it serious. When you take God seriously, He will surprise you. When you play games with God and make Him look like one of those many things in your life, 
then you will not get results so i'm challenging all of us online those outside doesn't matter when you are coming to the house of god go as though you are going to be mentored taught trained built equipped don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals no you are going for a life-changing encounter are we together so exemption write it down exemption from evil exemption from defeat is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed exemption from all of those things i mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed that means it is within the power of god to cause men to experience exemption but like everything in the kingdom as we have been taught here everything in the kingdom including salvation the cheapest expression of god's grace and love there will always be a condition attached please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in god know that there is a condition attached your condition is a demonstration fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in god and your authorization to commit him to deliver the results expected without condition there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what god is saying watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and i don't give you a condition to pick it how else can i gauge and test whether you are interested i drop it here and say if anyone is interested come and pick it your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested are we together you will find people who will not come i don't have to be angry with them they are only sending a message to me that i'm not ready to eat cake the same way other people are sending messages i don't want to prosper i don't want to rise i don't want to walk in the anointing i do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in god obedience commits god obedience not to what you want you can't set rules and obey it. you obey the conditions prescribed by god you can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail you must obey the conditions prescribed by god hebrews chapter 1 the bible says god who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophet had in these last days spoken to us through his son son god who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people but in these last days among many other things his chiefest means of communication is his son the word that he has appointed to be heir over all things so it is important to trust the word of god don't just believe it trust the word of god and respect the word of god say amen there are conditions that if you and I keep, we will render the devil helpless and we'll find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph. Not as a cliche, but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of God and then give him glory. And I want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph number one is what i call the mystery of putting god first matthew 6 33 the god first principle you can write it like that god dash first principle the god first principle matthew chapter 6 let's start from verse 31 if you will media 
31. Let's look at 31. God first principle. Wherefore, take no thought. Other versions say, don't worry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithout shall we be clothed? 32. For after these things, these things, what to eat, what to wear, the house you will get, the car you will get, listen carefully, the children you will have, etc., your career, whatever. He says, after these things, do the heathen, the Gentiles, seek. Notice the Bible never said they get it. He said, after these things they seek. He didn't say, after these things they get. He said, cause to seek those things. Because number one, seeking them will never give them to you. That's not how to get them. The Gentiles are getting it wrong. They are playing by a wrong formula. They seek those things and they never get them. It looks like they get them. But then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing. Are we together? Then it says, for your heavenly father. Your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things. So God was comforting you. There are many fathers in your life. But the surest one, the dependent, your heavenly father knows. That ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek first. Everybody say seek first. It didn't say seek together. Seek what does it mean to seek first? If I organize a speech and price, Sam, get ready to stand up. And I say, Sam, you took first. Come out. Do you join him? He comes out alone. Topmost. Preferred. So the Bible says, among the many things, go back to your seat. Among the many things in your life, I want to marry, I want a job, I want my enemy to die, I, my, I must buy a car, this duplex is mine, I must possess it, I must receive a miracle at last. I'm not saying those things are wrong. He says, among them, come, seek. Seek. Isolate God out of the group, bring him out and pursue him. Listen carefully. I'm showing you a very deep mystery. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. We are seeking together. So we say, God, come. Child, come. Civil service, where is he? Come. We gather them like this and say, God, just hold my hand. But Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke. You see that? And so God says, where do I stand here? He said, just be, be blessed that you are in my life. And God says, no, my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent. Fight with whatever. You are so obsessed about getting land, you will miss a service thinking about land. You will never get it. That's the secret to high blood pressure. Are, are you listening to me now? It is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know. There are so many things in your life. Then it says, seek first. Give us that scripture again. The kingdom. Seek first. The influence. The sovereignty. Make God first in your life. And his righteousness. The word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith. Understand his systems. Amplified says his way of doing things. So, if you seek the kingdom alone, your obedience is still not complete. He said, rather than looking for money, seek to understand principles. Seek God. When you find Him and His kingdom, pay attention. While others are running, trying to look for money. While others are running, trying to look for breakthrough. He said, stay with God and understand His systems. What is your reward? How many of these things will come? This is Jesus talking. Please tell me how many. Oh, he did say some. Then you now use the money you have and get the rest. He said, if you seek God, isolate God and seek Him. And stay with His word. 
learning the systems of the kingdom not just religiosity bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom it leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember that these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and say look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you you, you get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i would not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boaz said leave it as you clean some you think it's just because boaz liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i will not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech that made him carry gifts and just gave abraham he wanted to carry abraham's wife an angel showed up and said if you eat, you would you are dead he didn't say you would die you touch this woman you are dead so as a husband you are now afraid whether they'll kidnap your wife and you go back to scripture and say instead of running around policing my wife like a fool let me find out what is the mystery a kidnapper is coming and that same angel will say i've been here for a long time you touch this woman don't say is happening to others you don't know what they believe you define your reality by what you believe i keep saying it is when we will go to heaven that god will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me how many rams were dragged to another house how many bottles holy god my picture is everywhere somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself when you surround your life with mysteries you will laugh you will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you one more time sing it on him Satan has 
a system. The economy of the devil is such that he is obsessed. Do you know if you work for Satan, you will still not be idle? Satan is the master of occupying people with things. The only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results. The devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention. But hear what Jesus tells Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing, how many things? One thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Not to sit down and worry. You must be listening and you must be understanding. You know, let me share with you a little testimony. I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago, when God was starting out with us, that time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time there were so many people, pastors, reverends, apostles, prophets, I mean everybody was called. He was, he was, Zaria was on fire. Everybody was doing something. I remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say, man of God, why are you always sitting like this? You are always writing, studying the Bible. One even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me. He said, no, at your level, I mean... You are supposed to organize healing meetings, organize this, and, and I laughed. You know what I was doing? I was searching the mysteries of the kingdom. I didn't want to gather people and be a fool. And waste their time, and now be resentful at those having results. I knew it would take time. Brothers and sisters, ask those who knew me then. I spent my life studying scripture. I could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries. You see, this hurry, hurry in life. Is a very bad thing. God is a God of speed, but He does not rush people. He teaches you the precepts. Do you know? I say it with all humility. Over ninety percent of those people today, they are not even in ministry. They were passionate about fame. My God, passionate about PAs, passionate about briefcase and suit. The few times I spent with them irritated me. You sat down with them in 10 minutes, they were talking about their suit. I couldn't afford it. I could afford to study the word. So I stayed on what I could afford. God made it cheap enough for me to stay there. There were so many people, just the, all this fake and false life. Oh, my shoe is this, my that, and I just ignored them with all their nonsense. And I'm glad I did. Just like some of you now, while others are running, God is saying, sit down. You are saying, God, for how long? God is saying, if you knew where I'm taking you, you will start rejoicing. Because one step in knowledge will cover up ten years of foolishness. Ten years of wallowing in trouble. You know, this money thing, God has said, it's a year of wealth. Listen carefully to me. Most people believe that God cannot bless them. They really do. That's why they don't listen to him. If you were having a job, Sam, and you were paid, let's say 100,000, how much is that in one year? Please help me. One point. Assuming nothing changes in 10 years, how, I was going to say, how old is that? How, how much is that? 12 million. Because of 12 million, you rubbish your 10 years. Rubbish your 10 years. Fighting, quarreling, hating, and living foolishly. Whereas God is saying, if you will pay attention to me, I can do something to you and bring your 10 years to 6 months, to 2 months, to 1 month, to 1 week. And many of you are, God, don't, just leave me or I know what I'm doing. You know, for many people, the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job. Just, oh, I mean, what, when you are talking like this, oh, please get out. I have a job. A good job. What is a good job? What is your definition of a good job when you are employed? My definition of a good job is a good job that I have absolute control of. If I cannot control it, it's not a good job. Because somebody's wickedness can affect me. Correct? I'm not saying get a job is bad. No, no, no. We prophesy jobs here. There are many disciplined, diligent, 
employ people don't be lazy and think i'm endorsing you i'm about to attack you from the other side you know me i will have to balance it don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason but i'm i'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things these are the things that destroy us to an extent that they now give somebody a job if the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship that's the day you will be needed most that's a useless and nonsense job i repeat that is a useless and what nonsense job the job that has to make you leave god to do it is a stupid job if you are involved leave it now let men insult me no problem leave it listen i've worked with god small he's reliable listen to what i'm telling you are we together now that's why they get angry when god blesses people because they come and say ah, ah, pastor alpha papa what happened three cars two duplexes then the painful part is he didn't build any of them say no this, this is I mean, I'm, no i can't i don't like this guy whether you like it or not it's a mystery everybody say mystery that's why i call it a mystery a mystery of exemption that where others have to do a lot of things i've said it listen if you're a businessman here listen to me and don't think i'm daft as i speak stop wasting your time to save money to buy land in the kingdom you don't buy land through saving you provoke favor listen i know what i'm saying if well god bless you you can you can save and god will honor it i will even pray on it but you are you will be ready for frustration satan that i know will cause something you must eat out of that money no matter how disciplined you are where you are pushed to the wall you must withdraw something you don't get land you don't get properties by saving psalm 44 verse 3 give it to us please read that scripture and never forget it's just a digression and i'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray i want us to pray tonight help us please psalm 44 verse 3 you are a christian please read it with all your heart one to read uh-huh so how did they get the land now teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you and say you and that your stupid man of god in koinonia people should continue this nonsense you will beg for bread beg for bread see i'm teaching what i'm teaching some of you is very hard even you you are trying to believe it but what they have told you you are now wondering i hope it will work it's like leaving a rope you are about to fall and i'm saying leave that rope and just come and you are saying show me the the quota and i'm saying, just leave it if it be thou bid me come what i'm sharing many of you i can't you, you see i'm a spiritual man i receive a spiritual feedback i see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what i'm saying it's not like you want to doubt it but you are saying, ah Apostle is hard though. Some are foolishly saying it's because you are a man of God, you are enjoying. Was I born a man of God? You you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying. People give you tithes and give you offering. No. I'm showing you how to be happy. That's how to be happy. That you can carry your wife. And be happy you can see a jimmy and his wife you can see Ogasho. there are happy people you can see aaron several pastor alpha there are other angry people you see them and their wife and stress that guy is 35 but even you you would you would think that he is maybe 50. life life squeezed him disobedience added his weight on top and the devil sat on it that's his destiny don't laugh take very seriously what i'm telling you there are people you see them with their wives happy giving god glory giving god praise because they are they are they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom they know what to do with their children 
they know what to do with the enemy Kai, may you know what to do it's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do the bible says but he himself jesus now knew what to do look at the brother that shared the testimony the one who trekked from um uh, is it a police station or somewhere now you see can you see that in spite of the trekking he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him it's not fear it's a mystery listen when you trust god you commit him let me tell you something about believing god watch this if this is the door watch this this is a big revelation for someone call this place i'm standing the door to your destiny are we together if you turn around following this door with total sincerity believing that it is god that is leading you god will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody stop being afraid who said he must remain there he said i am the door when he moves the door moves so listen listen that's why god protected that brother and brought him to hear the word the devil may have planned god does not give men doors he's the door once you are following him i tell you in your sincerity even in your error he will still say i am the door pass i'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that He's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got His instructions 100%, it's because our hearts are sincere. So, while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, Pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into do they were right but god was god did you hear what i said they were right their predictions were correct i shouldn't have made it but god is god choose which part to follow right or god i follow him or i follow him are you hearing what i'm saying i don't walk with god with fear since god revealed this to me i mean i live a very happy life to hell with satan i live a very happy life my heart for god is the chief requirement he will take me to the place of destiny if this is the path god earmarked for me and i follow this path but with a heart of sincerity knowing that i seek god my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation he will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here believe me i have worked with him that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy it's still not the highest thing you can change it he's speaking based on what he saw but there is something between you and God that can change it. Have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw, a doctor saw, that woman had lost a child. They saw this guy had lost um, whatever. And the man would look and say, it is true. I'm seeing blood. You have lost a child. But I bring a sincerity between me and God. And after nine months, a child comes out. Where did it come out from? I am the dog door means access the door to everything don't let men fool you and make it look like you have missed it you have missed it you hear people make that arrogant statement you have missed it miss what god my god you are joking he will navigate that door hear what i'm telling you this is why restoration is possible he can take it and turn the direction and bring it listen he is god he does not submit to any man you be God, you know, be man, no. You be God, you know, be man, no. Alpha and Omega, you be God. You be God, oh. You be God, oh. Sing it one more time. Let me tell you a big secret.
secret. The key is not perfection. The key is sincerity. Learn this. It's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory. It's the sincerity of your heart. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight? God first. You touch a man addicted to God, you are in trouble. I'm telling you. You touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say people think you are stupid, they think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption, hear me, is when God occupies every space in your life. You will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you are a spirit. God first. It's not about koinonia. It's not about being a civil servant or a businessman. There are many foolish career people who threw God away. They loved God while they were on campus. The moment they graduated, they became too mature for God. They threw Him away and said, now we have, we have become, you know, I read, I read engineering, I read maths, I read, I read whatever it is. Lower levels of knowledge. They throw God, they throw His word, they throw everything. You never find them talking about God. They are even embarrassed. You come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God in pastor. Run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. You know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me, it's a joke. Do you love God? Are you serious? You don't bribe me with wine and hamper. I'm not an idiot. Do you love God? Because when all else fail, that one thing will bring you back. Job lost everything. And the one thing left, the wife said, leave it all. Job said, yeah, leave God again. I lost everything. And you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery, but I went for a surgery. God first. Everybody shout God first. Before that brother, God first. Before that sister, let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say, why wouldn't I get a job? Let the job come and meet you with God inseparable how can i leave him what will be my reason that he's not faithful i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you hey i never see anyone like you i never see please help me find my god i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you Sit down. Do you know some of you are looking at me strange? As you rise and you see many cheap victories, you will know why we praise God. We gave an instruction here, hold on, that people should dance their way to the next level. There were too many big people, big CEOs, arrogant people who felt too big. Why, why will I make myself a small child? Please, this koinonia, you make people look stupid. The kingdom is for children. When you become too big for the kingdom, you are too big for breakthrough. 
too big for what you think i like dancing have you ever seen me dance do you think i like dancing but at his word you become foolish enough to step into that realm. are we together god first that you vow a vow tonight and say lord listen brothers and sisters you know every time i come here i watch these little children and their parents i see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes and i see how their parents go i hear Ejimi calling his child the wife is there everybody doing all they're doing and i'm saying that's it that's the message god first they don't run to me they run to their parents god first we hate god that's why we run to him last we claim we love him the moment people are in trouble you run to your strongest point of deliverance which is your uncle and you ran and he told you the money has not come yet you insulted him and left angrily you went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said sir if i die now is it fair and god hold on god is watching we pray in tongues we roll around are, 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 are you what i'm saying we cry we do a lot of emotional things but in the midst of real life situations let me tell you god is my witness you are spiritual people listen the every issue of my life my first point of reference is god i have convinced myself that whatever god cannot do in my life cannot be done are we together the moment there is trouble and you are calling apostle it doesn't work you call prayer department leaders doesn't work college me doesn't work call pastor up a call they are wicked no god is with you in the room here you don't believe it and you are not even interested how many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening they sit by seven till ten then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yes, yes, no problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend 10 minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever pray. Listen, do you know, brothers and sisters, if not for God, the troubles I would have entered, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy, Koinonia would have crashed, crashed like a plane, but for God. But for God, you will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice. It's not because of perfection, it's because of God. When you know this, you will be outspoken about God. You think your business will rise because you have capital, and so you will keep struggling with it there. Another ignorant person who respects God will come from nowhere and rise. That's why you see, when listen, listen carefully, when men are clapping and saying, Ah, apostle did this. I thank God for it all. But me and God, we 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 know. Take God out of my life. I'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone. I'm not ashamed of it. I say it everywhere. Because every time I declare him, I bring joy to his heart. And he says, Son, you are sitting down on so much power, yet you are telling men it's not you most of you will not do it let me tell you there are many of you here looking at me if you carry one tenth of the kind of anointing god has put in my heart pe people will worship you you will put your name on your shoe you will be, by now they would have made rapper with my face by now you would have done everything but for him how can i dare claim that i'm responsible for this result will i be honest i may deceive you and you will believe me but I know. Listen, after great meetings like this, when I go back home, I have my small chair. I just kneel down. And sometimes you just see me hold the chair and I'm just laughing. 
I said, Kai God, boy, you said, look at how these people are clapping. Sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life, I wait till these my boys that are working for me, when they go home, I scatter it on the ground and I keep looking at it. I said, but God, you know this seed doesn't belong to me, Abby. It really belongs to you. Why would somebody work and you pay someone else? And God says, it's yours. That's your price for believing me. God first. Who deceived you that God is only for preachers? Who deceived you that God is only for pastors' wives? Please hear me. There are people here, inside, outside, online. You are not determined to be passionate about God. They ask you, you say, me, I, I take my things easy. I don't overdo anything. You better overdo when it comes to God. Because life will so crush you into pieces. Life is spiritual. When I worship God, I make sure Satan sees me. Worshiping God is a love affair. And he's not invited. He's absolutely not invited. I sing this song not because it's a special number. Is a revelation to me. He is my God. The way hope can hold a husband and say, My husband. You don't claim what is not your own. This water is my own. Right? The welfare gave me. If you come to touch it now, I'll say, You are a, you are a word. What are you? Thief. Thief. There is a name for that. When you claim he is your God, you prove it through your intimacy. It's not talk. What right have you to stand and say, let the power of God move? What right have you? You know, most people think it's just by talking. Now the power of God will move, move, move. You are, you are a big joker. Not with God. Not with God. You must have a track record. Not of perfection. Of passion. Believe me, if you do not have passion for God, forget about doing business with God in this kingdom. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you took a day off to spend time with God? Don't tell me you love Him. Let's examine it. You see why it is better for some people to not get jobs? Because God is having their attention. Now that they are idle, they can spend time. But the moment they get up, they are now in a hurry. Making money, hurry, making whatever. And then the times that they now have to spend with God, the devil now occupies them with something else. Don't look for what only God can give. It's not missing. Stay with the door, the one who has it, and he will give. Many preachers come to me and they say, Man of God, I want grace. I want to see results in my ministry. And I look at them, I say, so what do you expect to happen? And they just bring out of a bag, you see like four or five different anointing oils. And I'm not against it. They bring it as a man of God, just breathe on it. I will carry it back. And I look at the person and laugh. I almost want to tell them, get out of here. You are joking. You breathe a relationship. Is that how you grow your relationship? Time. Intimacy. Spend time with God. No. Spend time with men, yes. Spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you. And betray you. Unreliable as they are. They will clap for you as if they love you. As soon as you turn, they will stab you. Listen, I stop trusting men's sins. Men are as unreliable as the devil. I trust God. So it doesn't matter what men, what they do to me. Everybody say God first. Say God first. Let's, do. Let's look at the second part very quickly. Our time is gone. The second mystery that commands exemption, aside from putting God first in everything, is the mystery of kingdom service. Write it down. The mystery of kingdom service. I'm going to be very fast. Please write it and we'll pray. Kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth. Promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth. It's an extension of your love and your passion for God. Kingdom service. What is kingdom service? Serving God for a living. Serving God 
for a living. Kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs. No, no, no. Serving God for a living. There are three dimensions to kingdom service. Maybe we'll just touch one and then next week we can take the other one. I wanted us to finish because we'll start a series. Let's see how God will help us. Number one, the first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service is soul winning and establishment. Soul winning and soul establishment. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Soul winning and soul establishment. Brothers and sisters, it's a jackpot of breakthrough. Look at me. Anybody who tells you working for God does not pay is lying to you. And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn how many? Many to righteousness. They shall be as the stars. That's their reward for turning many to righteousness. Soul winning is not for evangelists. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Please give it to us quickly. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Soul winning as a demonstration of your service to the kingdom. It says, and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life. And he that winneth souls, very clearly, he that winneth souls is what? Wise. And the Bible speaking about wisdom says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Long lasting riches. Not ten years and you are down forever. Wisdom. Wisdom. That when you win souls, it is a service to the kingdom that compels God to bless you. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20. Very interesting scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 5, quickly please, verse 18 to 20. The Bible tells us that God has given us both the ministry and the word of reconciliation. Two things. Both the ministry and all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us, what's the first thing? It's an assignment. He didn't give pastors. He gave all men the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. To win it. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and had committed unto us, what? The word. He didn't just give you the ministry. He gave you the word. What to say. How to get men saved. Not just the passion and the assignment, but the ministry and the word. Look at me. One of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority, you never will find God trusting them with you. Most people think soul winning is a basic thing in Christianity. It's for people who don't have anything else to offer. Is that true? What Jesus died for? Everybody says soul winning. There are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble. You watch people who have not turned to righteousness. You watch people, you are coming for koinonia, you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell. And it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it. Your passion for souls. 
There are people here who God has lifted in strange ways. They make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of God where they will be saved. Shortly I'm going to make an altar call. And almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody. You have won a soul. Let me tell you, every time you bring a soul to God, as he's getting born again, start clapping. It's like taking a check to a bank. While you are clapping for his eternal salvation, clap for yourself too. Because the devil is watching. You have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption. A woman can win her way out of barrenness. That you sit down and say, Satan, you claim you will not give me a child. I need three children. I will win five souls for every child. And you go out and you win five and say, that's my firstborn. Let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it. If you don't have womb, the baby will grow anywhere. After all, germs grow anywhere. Fibroid grows anywhere. Growth grow anywhere. It doesn't matter where the baby grows. The most important thing is that he comes out after nine months. Are we together? Koinonia is heavily protected, among other things, by the mystery of soul winning. I have passion, genuine passion for souls. Not fake that pastors just do and cry. Genuine passion for souls. You are talking to somebody, he says, somebody else has, talk, has spoken to me, say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again. I'm still talking to you. Koinonia, hear me. I challenge you. Begin a serious project of soul winning instead of gossiping on Facebook, discussing matters of people that are not your business, writing things about men of God. Somebody, I was, I was, I was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me, thinking he knows me, and I said, Look at do you see these foolish people? You would have used that time and that unit to win a soul. Do you know the joy in the heart of a father? When one person comes to stand before Jesus. Listen, every time we pray for crowd, God sees my heart. It is never for a name. It is never to build an empire. I'm smart enough to know how to be famous. I'm intelligent enough to be able to write books. Souls. Souls. That when you win souls, it's on your record. The Bible says there is joy in heaven. Since you got born again, let me tell you, it's a shame as a believer. If right from the beginning of this year till now, you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom. It's a shame. You are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house. The same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house. Imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed and the wife is saying, honey, where's the food? Say, food for what? That's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls. You watch people go to hell. The primary assignment God has given me is not just to build and equip believers. You have to save them first before they are established. Facebook, text messages, you can find a way of reaching a soul. Genuinely, don't just say, I think he's safe. And talk to him and say, well, you see, you have to be serious with God. Think about it. Then you go back smiling. You didn't save him. You only informed him that his life is not going well. It's a different thing if he rejects. But give people a chance. Preach to your parents. Preach to your loved ones. You see how we celebrate so winning here. Many of you, when people give testimonies of cars, I got a car. I got a plane. You clap. But they say someone got born again. Somebody just knows. Oh, that's all right. Let's hear the real testimony. Which one is the real one? The car that will perish? Have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the, the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life? That's why we pray for souls. That's why as much as possible, as much as God grants us grace, we keep making altar calls. Even if nobody comes, let there be a witness in heaven. Are we together? Some of you, that's what you did that God lifted you. That's how this ministry started. We would pray for people those times before they got admission. When people came, that was before they started post-UME. I remember, 
as soon as people come we are like holding them and the next thing they get born again they get filled with the holy spirit and we create room for them to be established if you heal men and don't save them they are going to hell are you hearing what i'm telling you if you give if i give you money and you are not saved where are you going to don't say heaven don't let anyone lie to you you are going to heaven you are you don't have jesus in your heart please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you are a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they are on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody I, I, I don't believe that can be saved. Do you pray for souls? Or do you pray for money? Some of you are surprised. We are supposed to be talking about wealth. I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus preacher or no preacher i will make sure they love him i will make sure they love him stop discussing other things with people and don't prove their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern all these guys say but there's a way you know this brother is not saved and he's about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it. You are not just saving a man. You are saving every child that will come. You know, believers, don't be too western to be obedient. Take the foolishness of the word of God and be serious. On Tuesday, you are coming for prayer department. Prayer band meeting. It's the only department that allows other people to join them. You come alone. You leave and you are going. And you know that somebody he, he may not be born again dear but it can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of god's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest what what race I have little respect for any man of God that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning. I don't care what you have. The greatest people, when all is said and done, he that winneth souls is wise. You have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the, the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner. Are you blessed? We'll stop here. Next week we'll take on the others. But listen to me very carefully. Tonight one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning. I don't want you to just get emotional over what I'm saying. You don't have to get trapped and move around. It is your lifestyle. Huh? There are certain businesses that in Nigeria when the businesses came out people were too grateful to keep quiet they ran to people by themselves have you heard about this ah, my life is changing 
And the person say, I'm not listening. You must listen. I'm not going anywhere. I love you too much to leave you. That's the same way. That's the same way you talk to somebody. Are we together? The person is laughing and says, See, you and this, your God team. We did it before. We did this God team before and tell him you need to go back. God is not a project that you do before and leave. Many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved. There was no follow-up system and no structure for establishment. So when the cares of life came upon them, in anger, if God was God, why did he allow my wife to die? If God was God, why did he allow me to fail? If God was God, why did he allow me to do this? I left God since and they stayed. Explain the gospel to them. Let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with God and understanding his principles. Many people think the moment I come to Jesus Christ, everything will change. And be careful how you win souls. The basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them. It's a submission. It's a covenant of surrender and submission. When two people are getting married, they ask them serious questions. Will you be there for one another? Whether things go well or not. They answer yes to everything. And they mean it. Don't, don't lie to people. Of course in Christ you have access to these things. But train people to love God more than things and situations. Don't, don't make people think immediately I run to God. Everything will change and then an attack starts. On account of their decision. And they no longer can stand. There are many people who have been of other religions here. Some of them are here listening to me. They have made bold decisions for Jesus. And some of them, we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them. Because they, they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain. They deserted them financially, left them for whatever reason. But because they were saved well, they were saved to love and live for Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Before I make an altar call, while everybody is seated, I want you to cry. Pray while you are seated. Cry to God with every passion in you. And say, Lord, I am sorry for ignoring souls. I've been trying to do ministry and I've watched people go to hell. There are people who if I had spoken to them last week, last month. Pray. Lord, you gave me an anointing. I've been joking with it. Just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation. You gave me a ministry. I've been playing games with it. Watching people look warm and unserious with God. Brothers and sisters, let's be sincere with ourselves. That's not how we started. That's not how we started with God. We started with the simplicity of passion for souls. Pray. Talk to God. They call you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped. They insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed then you stopped outside are you praying Lord fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble from the grip of witchcraft from destruction That my life will cause men to love God. My life will cause men to be on fire. How can I be in an environment? No one is changing. No one is serious. No one's prayer life is rising. No one's word life is growing. Never transfer the message to anybody. You've never bought a Bible for anyone never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone you're not acting as a genuine christian believe me brothers and sisters 
Yet you want the anointing. Yet you want to be invited for crusades. Do you want the name or do you love God? Do you want the fame or do you love God? Do you just want the prestige and the persona? Or are you genuinely passionate? In this place, here and now, Lord, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, in our lives, in our hopes, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Through my life, through my life, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Through my life, through my life, tonight, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. about fame and go for souls and watch the wonder God will do with your life forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls forget about the witchcraft in your family I know you were born with witchcraft I know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny leave them alone and go for souls and let me see the charm that will tie you down souls don't just pay tight. Don't just sow seeds. Win souls. Win souls. Win souls. You are too big to win souls. You are too big to be exempted. You are too big to turn many to righteousness. You are too big to receive the defense of God against the vicissitudes of life. But apostle, I'm a shy person. That's why there is grace for you. But Apostle, I'm not a man of God. The Great Commission is not for men of God, my friend. Prayer point number two. Lord, every soul appointed to be saved through my life, in the name of Jesus, I begin to seek them and pursue them. Every soul appointed. There is somebody that must escape hell because I am alive. Lord, where are they? Reveal them to me and give me the grace to hunt them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Who have you appointed to be saved through my life? Lord, who have you appointed to be saved through Koinonia? Who have you appointed to be saved? To be serious with God through our teachings. Jesus said, All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost except the son of perdition, that scriptures may be fulfilled. And none is lost, and none is lost. Hallelujah. Before I make the altar call, I want you to take two minutes find somebody that is serious and i want you to intercede for your family members and say i stop them from going to hell lord they can't go to hell i know as of now my father is not yet a christian but lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate <laughs> Oh, my God. 
gates of salvation. Draw them to meetings. Draw them to crusades. Draw them to meetings. We release angels of salvation. Lord, give them dreams. May they have encounters with Jesus in their sleep. May they have an encounter with Jesus in their offices. Time for their salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up. We are going to pray for salvation through encounters. That's the strange dimension the Spirit of God is moving right now. Where men by themselves are in a room, all of a sudden they are caught up. An encounter that will rattle every stubbornness. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, we release encounters this night. Dreams. This night. Visions. This night. Encounters. In the beer parlor. Encounters. In public places. Encounters. In business board meetings. One is preparing to go for armed robbery, encounters on the road, encounters with Jesus. Last prayer point you are going to pray and say Lord I have made you first in my life and I'm committed to serving you therefore I invoke exemption upon my life I no longer will cry their cry prophesy it I no longer will go through their pain no glorious exemption from poverty Glorious exemption from sickness. Glorious exemption from failure. Are you praying? May that mystery be activated in my life. May that mystery be activated. Surely they will gather. But by this mystery, they will scatter. They will come in one way. And the Lord will disperse them in seven ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. I prophesy upon everyone here as you are laying your hands the same way a mark was put by God to Cain and said by this mark you anyone who sees you will leave you in peace he did it to a sinner Cain he put a mark right now in the name of Jesus as you are placing your hand on your head I place a mark of exemption upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hear me if the devil is looking for men to kill in a car accident it will not it will be minus you in the name of Jesus Christ hear me when the devil is fermenting trouble to destroy families cause scandal between husband and wife cause scandal between pastor and whatever in the name of Jesus minus you you are exempted in the name of Jesus hear me the same way God has exempted this ministry from financial turmoil and recession I pray upon you beginning from this night every time a man is looking for who to favor I command them to find you
lift your hands. I'm still praying. If there is any mark, just keep your hands. If there is any mark upon anyone's life that brings bad luck, that brings enemies, that brings the wrong people, that brings the wrong situations, the wrong atmospheres, I'm speaking to you right now. That mark is erased forever. Forever, forever. Erased forever. Erased forever. That mark upon your ministry that misrepresents you, that mark upon your life, every sincere thing you want to do, men see it in another way. That's the mark of the devil. Every time you are doing things genuinely, but people keep misunderstanding you. I cancel that mark from your life now. Put down your hands. You know, through the week as I just spent a little time with God, I wrote something down that I would want to read verbatim just the way it came to my spirit. I wanted to listen. I said many believers have a lot of zeal and passion but their understanding about realities spiritual realities is so small they hardly experience any sustainable growth breakthrough or victory listen carefully many believers have a lot of zeal and passion these were my contemplations during the week but their understanding about spiritual realities is so small they hardly experience any sustainable growth breakthrough or victory and then i wrote this the cure is submitting oneself intensely to teachings that supply useful informations and broaden our comprehension of spiritual things this is what i prefer as the cure for this state of spiritual bankruptcy where on one side a man can have all the zeal required but another side he may not be able to sustain his growth breakthrough and i said the cure is not just to listen but to submit yourself it comes from the word baptism like a baptism you baptize yourself intensely to teachings that supply useful information and broaden your comprehension of spiritual things and that's what God is helping us to do the mystery of exemption how real is exemption is there such a reality in the spirit is there a provision in the dealings of God with men where a man can be exempted Genesis chapter 4 verse 13 let's start from there tonight media let's work together tonight Genesis chapter 4 verse 13 the reality of exemption everyone please read we're reading to verse 15 one to read this was hold on this was a situation between Cain and God are we together now Cain haven't discovered that he killed his brother God pronounced certain judgments upon him and this was the response of Cain one to read and Cain said to the Lord uh -huh, my punishment is greater than I can bear 14 behold thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass this was his fear that everyone that findeth me hold on before we go to 15 everyone that finds me no specific i mean look at this kind of tragedy in a man's life everyone that finds you destroys you and then something happened in verse 15 the first demonstration or the second demonstration outside of the garden of eden where we see a man being exempted 15 read on please and the lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him and the lord set a mark upon a man he had caused this was his request reduce my punishment oh god 
I know I'm already cursed. You have made me by your pronouncement a fugitive and a vagabond. And everyone, that means there was another mark. He said, anyone that sees me will kill me. And the Bible says, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Why? Lest any finding him should kill him. Does that mark still exist today? Where God can put upon a person. Lest any sickness finding you will kill you. Lest any catastrophe. Exemption is a reality. You have to believe this. In the economy of God. The aspect and the dimension of kingdom reality you believe. Is what will become your experience. It is important to listen to men of God. Listen to pastors. It is important to be loyal to people. But you are only loyal to them provided they are loyal to the word. If a man is not loyal to the word, I will not listen to him. Because he will peg me around his limitation. And present his limitation to be the full portrait of all that there is in God. So believing him in innocence, I will still be bankrupt of certain dimensions of spiritual reality. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Meaning, if you find at any point that I'm not interested in developing myself in the knowledge of God, you are authorized to divorce yourself from your loyalty to me. And he set a mark upon him. Exodus chapter 8, 22 and 23. Let's give the second scripture tonight and then we'll begin to build. Exodus I like us to read it. We're reading 22 and 23 together. One to read. And I will severe in that day, read on, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. Listen. And that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Last verse. And I will. Between my people and thy people. And it says tomorrow shall this sign be. Exemption is a sign. A signboard leads somewhere. When I get to a place and I see someone's hair and a clipper upon it. It is a signboard saying there is a barbing saloon close. That means when God exempts you it's a sign that the hand of God is within the vicinity at work in the life of a man. It says tomorrow shall this sign what sign a division swarm of flies will come and devour people and their crops and their savings and everything but i will put a division say lord exempt me shout it with faith lord exempt me <laughs> exemption is real it is a reality in the system of god there are men there are ministries, there are organizations that are working in the reality of that truth. And the goal of this teaching is to help us. You cannot boastfully speak of triumph in a year when you are watching things kill people. I think it was Kenny who was over at my place briefly just for a word. And then um, he met me having a conversation with Ejimi with discussing something very serious. And then he said, I think a woman, I don't know, maybe the woman is here. A dear woman of God who lost two children concurrently. I think within this vicinity. Lost a child, they went to bury the child before they came back. Or I think immediately they came back, another one died. Don't ever tell me that's a natural death. No, sir. I know God enough to know witchcraft when I see it. Are we together? And I will put a division. A division. God, please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. I have taught again. And let me say this. The realities of the kingdom. Are available. In Christ. But they are accessible. Through understanding. Backed up by obedience. That's what the Bible calls faith. Faith is not quoting scripture. Faith is that. The journey of faith starts with your understanding and accurate comprehension. Not just of what God has said. 
the end of understanding is you know your role in the equation if you don't know the part you have to play you have not understood it there are so many people listen carefully there are so many people who want the things god has said but they do not they even have the zeal to obey but they are they are in confusion as to what their roles the role that you have to play obedience is key if you are to experience anything in the kingdom deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord it says to do and observe all that i command thee to do and observe not discuss and wish not desire and intend to do and observe all that i commanded this day that this blessing shall come upon you overtake you right and all of that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so many believers are living in an illusion that because god is so mighty he will not allow them die like that after all jesus gave his only son let me tell you something this thing called the will of man is an implication on us the will of man stops god from assuming man needs his help your obedience is proof of your dependency in, on god it is costly to sit down and assume that after all god knows i need his help god knows i'm tired of poverty god knows i don't want death god knows the background i come from god knows the witchcraft in my family you have to engage the world through understanding and complete obedience complete obedience say amen the next time you pick your bible don't just search for what god has said search for what he told you to do to see what he has said this is how believers become matured let me tell you something brothers and sisters many of the continual woes in people's lives is not because the outstretched arm of the lord cannot show up it is because they are waiting and hoping that because jesus died upon the cross one day he will change my finances one day he will take away evil from my life that day may never come he says there remaineth a rest hebrews 3 4 for the people of god there remaineth a rest he says if you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness and died the day you hear his voice is potentially the day of your breakthrough the meter of your success starts reading from the day you obey not from the day you hear you can hear god when you were 10 years and obey him when you are 40. the meter reads that you have obeyed god for one year obedience is what counts are we together not just blind obedience obedience based on understanding because you can obey nonsense you can obey what pastor said you can obey what apostle said but only hope that what apostle said is really what god said come i can give an instruction and god says let's go right that's how we are going to get the result are we together now and then you move left you see that with that kind of instruction listen two things will happen number one you stand a chance of being destroyed because although you are obeying my word is not consistent with the word of god now let me tell you something i've learned about god i've shared it here the mercy of god which is the last dimension of this series we are going to consider are we together now is such that because you obeyed me totally believing that i came from god god will remove that breakthrough and relocate it to your direction of obedience it should not have happened but because you will have to honor your faith because you received me as touching christ then god will deal with me now for misleading you so that one is between me and god 
but you are not going to be punished for obeying me as passive. This is why you will see a man of God teach nonsense. People will obey and still get breakthrough. It's not because what the man is teaching is right. It's because the testimony of God is upon their obedience. And so God will prove himself. Then the man of God erroneously will justify that because it worked, it meant it was correct. No. As you walk with God, a day will come when God will say, if you do it again, I will deal with you. I've been keeping quiet and you have been manipulating money from people. The other time, you lied that I sent you to a Jimmy to collect 100,000. He gave you and he got a car. And you claimed it was a sign that you are, you are Apostle Joshua Selma. If you tell anybody to give you money again, I will personally reveal myself to you in the night vision. <laughs> say obedience. Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Can we pray just for a minute and say, Lord, the spirit of disobedience. You know there's such a spirit? Pray. Get it out of my life, oh God. I'm tired of the way it has been cheating me and shortchanging my destiny. Caspito, be very serious about it. There are many of us, the moment God tells you to do something, there is a spirit that refuses you from obeying. Die! And the spirit said, don't worry. They are just trying to destroy your money. You are sick and God says, take the communion. It's all this nonsense. I don't want to look like a child. Cast it. It's a spirit of disobedience. No, oh, yes. We will obey Yes to your will. Yes to your ways. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you very much. Let's do a quick revision. Um, in the last discussion that we had together, we agreed that the first key. The first principle prescribed by God for any individual, any group of people to experience exemption is what we call the God first principle. Everyone say it after me. Yeah, the God first principle according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. The Bible says to seek first his kingdom. And I told us that when God becomes secondary in our lives, we have signed in for disaster. God must become first and all. Not first alone. First and all. First and all. Are we together? Anytime God becomes first alone, that's not enough. He must be first and all. That's what gives meaning to every other thing that comes in your life. And then... The second thing we talked about is the mystery of kingdom service and we stopped there. Am I right? The mystery of kingdom service. And I told us there are three dimensions to kingdom service. We took on number one and we said soul winning and establishment. Please make sure you don't forget. We agreed that soul winning talks of helping men find Jesus. And leading men to embrace the Lordship of Jesus over their lives. And we examine the few scriptures. I don't want us to go there. I'll just quote them quickly. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. It says, And they that be wise shall be like the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the heavens even forevermore. And um, the Bible also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 to 20. That God has given us the ministry and the word of reconciliation. Both the ministry and the word of reconciliation. And we looked at Proverbs 11 verse 30. The Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. And remember what um, David said about wisdom. He said, With me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. He says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. So part of the benefits of soul winning is that you have access to the wisdom of God that will produce results in your life. So we'll take it off from there. The second dimension of kingdom service...
that we must engage for supernatural exemption is service in the house of God. Write it down. Kingdom service. Service in the house of God. Exodus, please. Exodus 23. And then we'll look at 25 to 26. Please make sure you write it down and you follow carefully. Service in the house of God. Very few believers have been taught that service in the house of God is a system created by God for men to experience supernatural exemption. Exodus chapter 23, 25 and 26. Okay, let's read it. One, two, go. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Uh huh. Four things. He will do four things. I want us to understand. What is your own part of the deal? You shall. And then when you do serve him, he shall bless your bread and your water. That's number one. Number two, he shall take away sickness. From the midst of thee. Number 3, verse 26. There shall nothing cast her young or be barren. So we see the blessing of fruitfulness. And finally, the number of thy days I will fulfill. All this and more just for serving in the house of God. Now listen carefully. Most believers think service in the house of God is a way to help the man of God and help his vision or help the church grow it is a very dangerous understanding part of the kingdom responsibility of any and every believer is to contribute actively to the advancement of his kingdom and that involves making sure that every structure and platform he has put together finds an atmosphere and an environment where people can be saved, built, equipped, and empowered to represent his purposes. And that includes service. Service in the house of God as prescribed by God. In fact, when the Lord was sending Moses to Pharaoh, this is what he said, Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may go and serve me. Serve me. There are many people who have gotten more results than even their personal spiritual lives because they have subscribed to the foolishness of kingdom service. Are we together now? Many people do not know that service in the house of God brings blessings. Many people pity the man of God. I said, there's nobody holding camera. Kai, let me not waste my Nigerian TV college certificate. Let me just come and help them. The moment you have an idea that you are helping a man of God or helping a ministry, you have destroyed your potential for blessing through service. Are we together now? Every worker in the house of God is an employee by God. You have to understand this. Every genuine worker in the house of God is an employee by God. What a privilege to be in the labor force of God. You work for people, you don't trust their integrity, you don't trust them, there is no guarantee of their reward. And here comes the king of the ages, recruiting men and women to make sure that his house is served properly. Do you believe who lied to you that you will serve the king of kings? Look, there are men who serve God for a living. I'm not talking of pastors. They serve their way into unimaginable breakthroughs. As good as soul winning is, do you know it's a terrible thing? And this has been the foundation of our teaching even in this ministry. That you are born again and not actively useful. Your energy, your wisdom, your creativity is not contributing. I cannot sit down in a place and be comfortable that the grace, the gift, the creativity, the, the energy that God has given me is not participating 
in the building of the Lord's house that when souls are saved you cannot say my energy contributed my wisdom contributed to making this happen I was part of those who set the sound for those outside to hear the word of the Lord and be saved I'm part of those who clean the altar to make it conducive I'm part of those moving around when someone fell under the anointing as that demon was flying out of his life I held him if your energy cannot be accounted for as being used to serve God, you qualify for disaster. It's not a threat, it's the truth. Job 36 verse 11. Read with me, people of God. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36, please give it to us. Job 36 verse 11. One to read. If they obey and serve him, uh -huh, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. What's the condition? If they obey and... So if Bill Gates money, if Bill Gates energy, if Bill Gates institute is contributing, if Zuckerberg's Facebook is contributing to advancing the kingdom he qualifies to profit more than a tongue-talking christian whose energy are we together now if they obey and serve him the moment your energy you remember the bible says love the lord with all your heart uh-huh with all your might all your strength everything about you must contribute in that process you can't say i love god no 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 the worship songs that lift the spirit of men did they come from your secret place or are you just a recipient you came to the house of god and saw chairs cleaned and you argued and fought with people and sat down and god is watching when i was falling down why didn't you catch me you just allowed me to fall down like that and god is watching listen you can start your way out of any cause and any yoke i've said it years years and i will repeat it again i i don't want to use the word fear like dread but i have a great respect for people who serve me in christ and serve god because i know they are walking their way to an enviable dimension Service. Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you My best, Lord Is everything I have My best, Lord I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. These guys don't know the song. You made me great. I give all I have to you. Yeah, you made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best. Lord, is everything I have, my best, Lord, I give all I have to you, my best, Lord, is everything I have, my best, Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen, this used to be our national anthem those times when we were preparing for crusade. We would sing it and dance as we walked ourselves out like fools. It was a song I wrote as a love song to God. 
a, a declaration of my surrender how could I give him less you know when you go to buy clothes they will tell you there is this time but if you really have money let's climb up there is a section I don't have that kind of thing with God everything he finds is all of me service Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 let's read it one to read and they shall be mine uh huh in that day when I shall make up my jewels I will spare them read on as a man spared his son not that loves him that serves him next verse then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked uh -huh. between him that serveth God and him that serveth him there is a difference so sister don't let anybody fool you and say keep serving all these stupid people that's how everybody will marry and leave you just hold on God will give you a man that is equivalent to your salary of 30 years while the rest are there using whatsapp to connect and arrange it you are serving do you know sometimes people can mock you as you serve God they'll say you are serving God so that you get husband is that not a good reason is that not a good reason is it not better to serve God and be sure of what he gives oh come on now many workers in the house of God are turned to be fools because they spend their time they spend their energy and when people who don't understand spiritual things look at them they say but Sam, you are underutilizing your potential that's what they say simply because in many circles maybe the people are not staff of the ministry and may not be receiving anything like a salary and so men you see newspapers insulting men of God and say the labor force they should have employed they now get people in many churches while they are building you will see wealthy people come and they are trying to put it and they insult the men let me tell you certain things about your service that makes it fruitful number one your service must be willing if you serve God out of compulsion you will never receive a reward from it please understand this this is why as a ministry we never coerce people you don't manipulate people using courses and say if you don't say no 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 that's that's manipulation if there be first a willing mind willing mind service it must be willing number two it must be with joy it must be with joy you don't serve God with joy forget about your reward believe what I'm telling you grumbling all around say oh, today is Tuesday again we are just going to pray only God knows where Apostle is we are just suffering to pray for him and he's enjoying let me tell you you speak like that God will punish you and the covenant I have with him will punish you two things against you very bad statement and when you stand ba, 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 and there you see people pray all their heart and say why are they doing this did they charm them that's the same way when they are enjoying the blessings and you talk god will say keep quiet thank god you saw them when they were praying like fools brothers and sisters i show you the 21st century investment serving god serving god Banks will not teach you this oh. Serving God Wholeheartedly With all your heart You are giving God everything You are sweeping the house of God And you know sometimes I watch these people When the power of God begins to move And sometimes people are around under the anointing coughing all kinds of things and you see all those ushers coming and i'm saying my god look at this sometimes they are there scrubbing the toilets cleaning the toilets people with dignity and respite and their reputation they throw it on the ground just because of the house of god if you were god will you leave them like that please answer me if you've been evil 
No, I think I'm compassionate enough to see someone who is serving sincerely and not let him go hungry. Let me tell you something. If you know you are serving God, especially in this ministry, wholeheartedly, you have a right to claim a reward. I teach the leaders. You can go before God and say, Lord, I am in your payroll. No witch, no devil, no darkness. I'm serving, Lord, I swept your house with sincerity. Lord, I was cooking the food. This is the evidence of the firewood. This is it. This pain is a sky, is a testament. Lord, when I was given an assignment to lead prayer, I did it with all my heart. Unto you. When I was serving as a head of department, it's not eye service. With joy, the Bible says, shall you draw. There are many angry preachers. When they come on stage, you know they are angry. As though the members are not blessing me. I'm here blessing you and you are not. Please, pastors, don't harass any member they didn't call you. Go and meet the person who called you. Don't harass any member with money and all of that. You know, let me tell you something. Let me digress and talk about this money thing. If you manipulate people to bless you, number one, that money will never be useful to you and you rob them of their blessing. The secret of being blessed from people, raise them. Raise men, not money. Raise men. Empower people. Pour your heart and teach them everything. And they will surprise you. Some of you will build me houses in the future. No, 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 you will. You will. It's not whether you like me or not. You will be too blessed to forget about me. It's a programming. Something is happening to you. I know you think I'm just motivating you. And then tomorrow someone will be angry. He said, what is it about this guy? You know, let me tell you. Let me teach you a secret of greatness. Find people who are weak and start investing in them. Grow with them. You can change their future, but you can't change history. Your name is already imprinted in their starting up days. Not that you see somebody who you did invest in. Just because he has a car, you say, my son, are you stupid? What did you contribute in his life? That's why nobody calls a blind person his son. Nobody calls a deaf person my daughter because they are looking for privileges. But there is a way you will bless somebody and pour your heart. And they say, Lord, bless me. Let me find something to do to this person. True wealth is men. The result of their impact and their gratitude to you for changing their lives. All this run around one, two, you have not said anything, you are saying, Sam, I've been seeing you changing clothes and I've not eaten of your, your reward. That's, 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 a, that's a lot of foolishness. No. God is my witness and I say it in the open. That I don't have any special person that I corner and say, please, you are a, a, an elite uh, group of people. You are the ones who will be servicing me. That's why I walk the word for myself. You see why it's good to be blessed? So that you can preach and not depend on anybody who tells you, preach on, on enemies. Then they change your message simply because they, they are buying generator. You carry your generator and go away with it. Never mix money and ministry. You will be doing a very foolish thing. And not every seed is collectible. Some seeds are your birthright. Please don't be foolish, pastors. I don't know why I'm speaking to you now. Not every seed is collectible. Some seeds are you are collecting your dignity. You are you are you are trading away your dignity and your destiny. You must decide. Not everything is worthy of receiving. Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Let's continue. Service in the house of God. It must be joyful. God is my witness. I know God be my witness in the midst of your people. I have never, I have never since God began to walk with me way before Koinonia and this, I have never for once turned and complained and said, God, God, this ministry, Friday again or this day again. No. 
those who are close to me know that my work you do will take the grace of God otherwise you fall down and die one day and I do it joyfully tomorrow we are in Gombe preaching again and casting every devil out and we are happy I do these things not because any man is paying me I do it first because I love him but I know that it is a mystery do you know let me tell you something do you know what people call job is simply the rat race of trying to make ends meet when God really blesses you you find out that there's not much to do in life truly truly there is not much to do in life I think it was during the leaders training I was teaching them this when you are really blessed if your salary is hundred thousand let's even be fair two hundred thousand per month in one year that's 2.4 million in 10 years that's 24 million right all things being equal in 20 years that's 48 million so you are working and that's what you plan to get if god gives you 60 million now you will get up in the morning when people are working you just be scrolling and say what exactly do i do today so you see that listen this occupancy we claim to be busy is simply we are trying to look for money to build so you have a 10 year project to build a house and you get it one by one but you can serve your way to a God who does not pay a fixed price. He pays according to his riches. Not according. Your boss pays. Listen. Listen. Don't think I'm flattering you. When you are in God's payroll, laugh. Laugh for be happy. Service. There are many people who have cheated themselves. To serve your way into that child I've been burying for five years And you sit down And all you do is just come and sit down And be pulling your mouth and say Kai, Why is the house of God hot today? And the devil says continue This is the kind of people we like There is a way you can sweep any nonsense out of your life As you sweep the house of God and people are looking at you and saying, ah, ah, all these guys, apostle is standing, they are standing. How about, even the ladies are standing. Do you know even during night vigils they stand? What kind of punishment is this? They say, look at how church has torn your head. And God hears, you know God hears people. Yeah. Lord, I do it as unto you. I'm tired, but I carry the chairs. Yes. I'm tired, but I carry the chairs. I was, I, sometimes I look at the ushers and they are so trained. In my opinion, I think our ushers are one of the best trained ushers in terms of sensitivity, truly speaking, and response to the Spirit. I have traveled to many places, great churches, big churches, and it's surprising when the power of God begins to break out. Because most times the power of God breaks out at special events. So the people know. In Koinonia, anything can happen. I can be talking now and somebody is flying up. Before you know it, there's an usher there. They have the sensitivity. It's a training. All that training just for an usher, that's the training of a pastor. When you finish that training, should you be an usher? To be that sensitive to hold people, but he's watching. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I remember, and I always share this. There is none of us today that just got up and started ministry. Every one man of God that I know, especially those who came out of Zaria, you can trace their history to times of dogged kingdom service. I jokingly used to tell people, I think 1994-95, thereabouts, I used to play keyboard for a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi Ani. Power Praise Chapel, they started it. We would have our local assembly and I would trek with my own keyboard. I would carry it and go there and I'm just playing. Little did I know that one day, that little shepherd will also become king. Because that's how he watches. You are behind the throne. You better leave it and stay and focus on, on, on making sure the sheep of God is healthy. Many of you just eye every throne you see. That's why you keep fantasizing. The secret to the throne is in your servicing the sheep. I remember I would play keyboard for them. Afterwards, they would just come and hug me, bless you, and on my way home, trekking. 
I always say this only two things. I received only two things from that ministry. Wonderful people. Don't have any I don't even know where they are today. During the launching of the man's cassette, no CDs then. They gave me one bottle of Fanta and one free cassette. That's all I got for laborious service. I carry my keyboard by myself. I walk like a madman and I get one bottle of Fanta and, and, uh, and cassette. He was into prison ministry. But God was watching. You see that? Many of you just see before you start admiring people, find out their track record. They have a track record of service. Genuine service. Koinonia is where when people come, they throw away their golden crown. Nobody comes to do any big man. You are either serving God or you sit down there. Don't come and say, I am a... You don't come here outside and say, please prepare a special seat. And if you are special, we know. Once they don't know, you find somewhere and sit down. You don't come and say, look, I'm here together with my kid. No, no, we don't do that. Kingdom service. You want to experience triumph? You must be willing to serve God and serve in the house of God. Your energy, your time, your zeal, your gift, joyfully, not complaining. And say, I don't like my head of department. Tells everybody, thank you, accept me. He didn't employ you. No. He should say so. But if he doesn't, turn to God and say, Lord, you are the one I'm serving. I serve you with all my heart. Lord, you see every time I pray here. Lord, you see every time during the rehearsals. I spend hours and hours. Do you know, let me tell you something. And I want to submit to you. I consider myself to be one of the most privileged men of God of my age range and my level. I truly believe so. God has given one of the best sets of workers in Koinonia. I've told them too many times. I think you should clap. You really should clap. Hallelujah. It is difficult to find a ministry where men are very anointed, gifted, and yet very loyal and sincere and true. You don't find it. You never find arguments going on in, uh, during the leaders meeting. Uh, no, 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 no. Total submission, total loyalty to God. There are departments I don't visit for months and they never bend to the standards they are giving. The leaders serve with sincerity and truth. It's one of the secrets to my ministerial efficiency because most of the time is spent in prayer and the word and general oversight. Not going around to monitor because you suspect that this... Are, no, 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 no. Faithful people. Are we together? And among other reasons is because we sowed that seed of faithfulness. So we are not surprised. Do you serve God joyfully? And have you been indoctrinated and laughed at? Sisters, I speak to you particularly. Because there is this madness that flies around. The moment they see a young lady serving in the house of God, people just look at her. Those who say, ah, she's just serving because of husband. Others are saying she's just serving because uh, all these ladies just wasting away Jerry. Look at a fine girl like this. Will now come and make herself an idiot in church. Who told you the house of God is a place where destinies are wasted? Who preached that to you? Where did you get that indoctrination? That the house of God drives up the potentials of people. Let me tell you, the future, some of you, what you are doing now is already the price for the future. When you see men running around, God will say, I forbid you. You have served too much to serve men. I'm, I'm speaking to you from my heart tonight. How can I bow down before you? And then bow down before a man. No way. No way. 
hey, how can I kneel down before you and then kneel down before men? You must serve somebody in life. Either God or your shrine. Where you are coming out from. That you are supposed to be the next priest. You left carelessly at the altar is still crying for a servant. You better secure yourself serving God. There are many people who do not know that service is a mystery of exemption. You can't be idle on, uh, idle on earth. A master will occupy you. You don't serve God, you serve sickness. You don't serve God, you serve pain. You don't serve God, you serve a bad and wicked and foolish and stupid man. You don't serve God, you serve another demonic roaming around your family. Let me tell you, any arrow sent from anywhere will come and meet me serving. It will bounce back a thousand times. Because there is a system. There is an insurance system in God. For those who serve him. He says he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Say, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. He said, I shall not die. But live and declare. As I'm serving, I immune myself from death. I think I was discussing with a few people um, a few days ago. Look at me. Let me say something. Dominion Dominion Is not running away from things Because of fear of Satan Is prevailing over them And triumphing over them Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you an instance I think a discussion came up And then um, someone was asking a question And then I tried to clarify it If I'm supposed to go and preach now And you have a vision or a dream A true vision that my car is having an accident I will still go You see I will not allow that vision Stop me from preaching My limitation is only the voice of God Not the fear of death Dominion is to change it and go anyway That's dominion If you allow fear Destroy you You will not do many things Are we together? Yeah There are too many people being governed by fear. They claim to be walking in dominion. They have the money for flights. They will never fly. Because every time they are about to fly, they see something in the night. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You are not glorifying God. If you live an escapism life, you are always escaping. I just saw Sam that there will be an accident. And then Sam says, I'm not going again. Let's just be careful. One day, then... You've not seen people sit quietly in their houses and a truck came and killed them. The name of the Lord, rather, is a strong tower. The righteous enter. So as I'm driving, I'm in the name. The boss collides with the name before it collides with me. This is my understanding. And you know I travel a lot. We're about traveling tomorrow now. I'm saying these demons are hearing me. The spirit of death is hearing me. They are probably going to stand in the road to kill me tomorrow. And I'll be back on Friday. Now, you imagine that kind of frustration. <laughs> Apostle, don't speak like this, oh. Apostle, we love you. Don't, don't trouble them and they don't trouble. I trouble them big time. That's where I'm alive. Don't trouble them. <laughs> You don't fear two people If you fear God that's enough How can I bow down before you And then bow down before me No way How can I sing a song before you
never fears plain crash because it has no business with the air are we together so when the bible says i am far above i have no business with certain realities they only affect you when you dwell in that realm i don't know how to make you believe this thing listen i speak not only because god said it i speak because i found what i have to do to make it work when you make boastful statements like this without knowing your part you will die like a chicken the very next day the car will so butcher you leg and head together and scatter you i've seen the spirit of death I've, I've told you yes i wish i were an artist i would have drawn it for you you see let me tell you something brothers and sisters these spirits know men they know those who know them it's like somebody who is from your neighborhood and goes somewhere where they don't know him and says my father is the ceo of guarantee trust bank and all of a sudden you just come and say ah how oh, now let's go home and say you are falling my hand that's how spirits work when they enter a place they start for who knows them when they don't find they start roaring but when others step in they say oh you give us where we have kingdom business to do kingdom business to do having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete see let me tell you if i were faking this thing you would have known now i have laid hands on too many people with cancer to not have received it myself i've laid hands on too many people with communicable diseases not to receive it myself i have done this ministry work for a while medical science gives us a time range when exposing yourself to certain things will destroy you this thing is in your presence i do all of that no it's called the way the life of god there is a record that we have it we are rising gradually to walking in the fullness of it but it's no excuse for darkness when we see them we stamp them say amen but are you serving your way because not everybody qualifies to enjoy this thing we're talking about there are people who your service your service cannot rise as a memorial unto god isaiah 18 let's walk this and go to the next one quickly we have to pray isaiah 38 sorry isaiah 38 media help us isaiah 38 let's look at a very interesting story here about a death sentence over a man by a true prophet isaiah chapter 38 are we there let me read it when i get to a place where all of us will join out let us know in those days was hezekiah sick unto death sick unto what new living translation don't turn there but our new don't don't give us new living translation modern day translation is an incurable disease an incurable disease is a disease unto death he said in those days was hezekiah sick unto death and isaiah the prophet the son of amos came unto him saying listen thus saith who not a demon the lord set thine house in order for thou shalt and not live isaiah was not a false prophet he spoke from the mouth of the lord let's see something that hezekiah did verse 2 then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Let's see the content of the prayer. Verse 3. And he said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. When you read about Hezekiah, you find out that he served God with his life, his resources were coming to that and hezekiah wept so lord is this how you reward your servants will i serve you and now die that men will say i serve you and you kill me verse 4 then came the word of the lord again to isaiah saying go and say to hezekiah thus saith the lord god of david thy father i have heard thy prayer i have seen thy tears behold i will add unto thy days 15 years verse 6 
I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city. He reminded God. Do you have the petitions that you take before God and say, Lord, look at the devil destroying my family. I'm a faithful servant in your house. Lord, last week, hundred people got born again and oh God, I was part of those who led them outside. Remember, and God arises and says, No, you are putting pressure on my integrity. I must arise and act for you. Hallelujah. It must be willing, it must be joyful, and you must serve God with diligence. Diligence. You don't serve God with laziness and slackness. You don't serve God with slothfulness. You serve Him willingly. You serve Him joyfully. You serve Him diligently. Let's go to the next one. The next dimension of kingdom service. So there's soul winning and establishment. There is service in the house of God. And then number three, kingdom investments. Serving God with your resources Kingdom investment One of the strangest mysteries of exemption Kingdom investment It literally is an investment Serving God with your resources Serving God with your resources Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Popular scripture We all know it It says Cry yet saying Thus saith the Lord Zechariah not Zephaniah Cry yet saying Thus saith the Lord My cities He says Through prosperity Shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion. Cry yet say, Thus saith the Lord, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem. My cities shall through prosperity. Listen. I want you to know that financial resources and other kinds of human resources play a major role in kingdom advancement. Don't mind those who tell you money is not important in kingdom advancement. No, that's not true. That's a wrong theology. We have money mongers and we have those who are frustrated with the issue of money. Both of them are wrong. Money is important just like the anointing. Financial resources are important for kingdom activities. And God's system is such that, listen, men wholeheartedly commit their lives, their resources and everything to the building of the kingdom by faith, in obedience and total trust. And they in turn schedule seasons of untold breakthroughs and blessings. It's how the system of God works. My city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad. So whoever contributes with his resources to making the house of the Lord built, to making sure that the activities of kingdom advancement keep on going, that person qualifies for certain blessings. Please give us Psalm 112 verse 9. NIV if we can get it. Psalm 112 verse 9. I love the rendition uh, that the NIV puts. If we can have that. Psalm 112 verse 9. This is the reason why many people Psalm Did I say 112? 122. I beg your pardon. 122. Psalm 122 verse 9. I like us to read one to read for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your I seek it not just to buy jeeps and cars houses vacations 
that's too small a reason to subject yourself through the stringent laws of wealth but it is for the sake of your house i will seek your prosperity i'm trusting god to bless me with resources oh god so that i will contribute in getting your activities done listen please the message of prosperity is not a demonic message there is such a message called the message of prosperity and it is not a demonic message it may have been taught selfishly it may have been taught inaccurately but that does not stop the fact that there is such a message and it is part and parcel of the truths of the gospel that believers must learn and know is God's economic system where people empower the advancement of his kingdom and receive rewards listen listen kingdom investment has nothing to do with just tight kingdom investment is not tithing kingdom investment is not worship offering kingdom investment is a sacrifice a commitment between you and god to commit your resources on a continuous basis to seeing that his house is built to seeing that his kingdom is advanced the gospel is preached lives are saved this is a commitment it is not a special thing that you gather believers and say okay right now all of you bring one one thousand naira it is the inaccurate understanding of the things of god that sometimes will have to necessitate those special events listen part of the financial system of my life every major money that comes to me i know that investing in the kingdom is part and parcel of my spiritual growth process no special event if x amount comes to me my tight god's portion is going i will never come to the house of god empty-handed i come with my worship offering joyfully there is a portion for my parents to bless their life there is a portion to bless people and improve on their lives but then there is a huge and i mean huge truly for the advancement of the kingdom i have a list of men of god i have a list of ministries that i sow into their life perpetually continually some per week some per month continually except resources don't come not because some of them don't even know me kingdom investment with all humility and i say this just to let some of us know not just to brag or make noise there are many programs that have happened in this city many programs that have happened around this nation and parts of the world that i just keep quiet i just carry a seed as god directs and i say you go and sow go and give that man of god sometimes i say just tell him no problem there's no need announcing him sometimes i say don't even tell them just go and sow this seed and i'm happy to see that my seed is saving souls i'm happy to see that someone's life posters are printed through my seeds i'm happy this water now is probably someone's seed you see that this pulpit right now is someone's seed a commitment to contributing resource wise to see in the kingdom you don't have to wait i keep challenging believers listen i wish i'm not the one teaching you this but i love you too much i have a scriptural obligation to teach you the truth and that i will do regardless of how you feel i will teach you the truth don't think this is some system to coerce money no 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 no. i fear god too much to do that but i have to tell you the truth because it's what i'm also doing a true kingdom investor finds a need in the house of god he's not told about the need you find it the same way you find a need in a rich man's life out of psychophancy to get project i say honorable i've seen that you'll be wearing only two shoes and he says you won't believe that i have only three he said i brought five you see that you brought five because you are hoping that you will buy relationship and it will work for you hallelujah 
find a need in the house of God. Look, three of us, let's come together. Koinonia needs more cameras. How much is it? X amount. Let's come together. Let's do an inventory. Consult with these people. The house of God. Oh, I think that I have 2,000 Naira. And my 2,000 Naira can buy three chairs in the house of God. You come on Friday dancing with three chairs. Three breakthroughs in your life. As you drop it, a sinner sits on that chair and the fire from heaven falls on him. As he's getting born again, let me tell you, God is issuing a warning. He sat on that chair to be blessed. Find a need. Don't wait until you are told. You find a need. I look at this, what can I do? But many believers don't. They just sit down. You need to see how the offering time is, is one of the most irritating time in many churches. Offering time and somebody just brings out something and tells his wife or whoever do you have. You know, the, the thing. They bring out 1,000, they put it back. They bring out 500, they put it back. They bring out 200 naira, the new one, they put it back. Then they carry the old ones. They say, oh, shall come and drop it and God is watching. As soon as they finish, they move straight to Chicken Republic and burn 5,000. Take ice cream for starters, take all of this and call friends, sometimes who are not godly. Let's come and enjoy. And God sees your passion. And then you lift your voice, I love you Lord God. He said, you're a liar. That's, that's not true. You don't love me. God so loved the world that he gave. Is that same attitude that follows men in marriage? Is that same attitude that follows in everything? When you love without giving, you're a liar and a hypocrite. True love comes with giving. Passionate, sincere giving. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. When I lift up my seed before God, as I sow those seeds, I am happy. It is my joy that I want to live my life in such a way that every month I'll be buying a bus for a church somewhere. What a joy to get to a church and see and say, what is your budget? And they say, we need a new cathedral. How much? 20 million. And you say, okay, let me just have a private discussion with the pastor. And I say, pastor, just give me the plan. Send your engineers to supervise. In three months, that church is lifted. Quietly. Noiseless contribution. You think God will allow men to will? If you have a helper like that, will you allow men to him? If your job is to pray for that person, and the devil and God wakes you and says the devil wants to take his life, oh no, come on! You will get an energy you never knew you had. You will pray and say, God, it's better to take one of my legs than to kill that man. But apostle, I don't have much. You will never have much. You give your way to that much. You give your way to that much. You can sit down and say, Look, what can I do for the worship team? We have just 100,000. Sam, this is for the dressing of the worship team. So they look good. This is to buy time for the media department. You don't have to come and say, make sure Apostle knows I'm the one. You have, you have killed and scattered and destroyed your potential. We live in a very political uh, Christianity where people like announcement and accolades. We are now announcing that Chief A and B is the one who gave that golf outside. Please, you have destroyed everything. He says, you keep, let your right hand not know what you I'm not saying there's no place of honor. Don't get me wrong. What can I do for you, my Lord? I want you to know my heart is yours. It's not a question of what you can do for me, but what can I do for you? Love. That's genuine love. By the grace of God, let me tell you, and I say it with all humility, I don't want you to do it for me. There are people here, people here, I know they have committed themselves with resources 
to say Joshua Selman, it should never, it should never happen that you are looking for water and my seed does not come. See, let me tell you, I say it with all humility. I'm a blessed man. I'm not talking about your money at all. I don't serve God because of money, not at this level. God has been faithful. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So don't think it's some coercion so that somebody will just bring an envelope. No, no. But I'm telling you, you don't practice this, you will not be exempted though, from the woes where the heavens of men will be brass and their earth iron sacrifice. Don't listen to this junk that people have, have been warning you about people who don't fear God and don't know anything about God. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnal people come and discuss all kinds of things. You don't serve God with your resources, you will serve sickness. You will serve trouble. You will serve divorce. You will serve pain. Have your way and bow your way. I think I've shared that testimony here. How that there was a particular uh, man of God. He, he was years ago. He gave this testimony, a very true one. Him and his wife. God is my witness. They were in a meeting, and I think they needed to roof a church or something like that. And whilst they were there, the man of God preaching was challenging people to sow into the work of God. You know, genuinely, not out of eye service and manipulation. Genuinely. And the Lord just spoke to the man clearly that he should give up his house, his real house, real estate, his property, to give up his house and move to a rented house. Can you imagine that costly instruction? He didn't know how to tell his wife. So according to him, he said as soon as he held his wife's hand, she started crying. Because the Lord had told her the same thing too. Brothers, may you marry a wife like that too, that will allow you to obey God. You marry a bad wife, you will not be exempted. May you marry a wife if all you are looking for is figure eight and you don't open up your spirit to pick signals that God can say, this is what we are doing. And your wife will say, I may not understand, but I trust you. I trust the word of God upon your life. Say amen. amen. And be serious about what you just had. Go around and choosing nonsense and destroy your life because to be carnally minded is what then you won't know now by the time the euphoria of young life is gone, you will start seeing what it means to live with a man or a woman who does not fear God. God says, Go left, say, no, we are going right. God says, Go right, and you perish like Jonah. Hallelujah. I believe I have had a chance to repent had he not married Jezebel because he looked like a calm king. She looked like a wicked demon that would not allow him. I was, he looked like a calm person, but her presence there. So he held his wife's hand and they agreed the will of God be done. How many of you know that if God gives you and your wife that kind of instruction, relatives will kill you? Even Christians. Say, which church first are you going to give the house? That man that is already rich, you, you people will never stop becoming fools in Nigeria because to them, giving is helping. Then they will now tell you, We have the poor and the needy in the villages. You don't give a poor man to be rich, you give a rich man to be rich. Learn this principle you bless poor men. To secure the help of God, it says to answer you in the days of trouble. But when you want to rise the law of honor, you show to a man that has attained the dimension you desire. Don't give poor people expecting to be rich. All that superstitious thing that they say, meet a leper and drop one naira. If witchcraft, you drop it, you will be broke, I tell you. You show into an anointing to rise. I didn't show to people less than me to be where I am. You so higher. The queen of Sheba knew. That's why she carried gifts and came to Solomon. Do you bless a rich man? That's why you are sowing into the anointing. The very anointing that God has. So you rise up to his realm. People do foolish things in the body of Christ with no spiritual intelligence. And then we are doing zealous things. But they don't bring results. To us, giving is helping. So many people say the poor and the needy. Jesus said the poor you will always have with you. 
you will always have don't be a hypocrite you will always have with you the person who is writing that junk journalism he didn't send his ipad to give the poor he used an ipad of two hundred thousand to write nonsense about men of god you see that be careful how you hear don't let people make the truth the simplicity of the gospel become just a social discussion a spiritual man is not just a homo sapien a spiritual man hails from above with another life and another economy you have to understand this they obeyed God and they gave up the house according to him all hell broke loose everywhere went haywire you know people who insult the woman you mean you cannot advise your husband what a stupid woman the man look at your wife and children and when they went to a rented apartment gave up that i think they sold it and moved the church oh I, I hope i'm getting the story right and then i think he said that god made a vow to him that he will never need to buy a house again in his life never and that man at the time he was speaking i think he was saying he had well over 10 houses none 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 came from his money one not part and then you complete it somebody builds a house furnishes it and say god instructed me now you see people operating at such a realm you don't know what they gave up you give up things to go up oh. you give up things to go up you don't carry luggages to go up spiritually financially leadership you when you see people rising find out what they left behind nobody rises with luggages you must be willing to give up some things to rise in the anointing you must give up some things to rise in ministry you give up some things to rise serving god with your resources there are instructions today i don't like talking about my personal life and the instructions that god has given me but those close to me know my life is like a madman i am a reckless giver if you are close to me and we are sharing accounts you will take me to court because the lawyer will even be tired because you will not know what to say again i don't know how many times i have emptied my accounts at the instruction of the lord to zero zero i'm not talking there is one secret one somewhere sincerely god is my witness as a ministry we have done it there was a year god gave an instruction at the start of the ministry to empty everything i told the finance department oh yeah god said it let it go it was less than one week how many days less than one week almost 10 times that amount came back do you believe this into the kingdom lord this is for your glory there are times and i say this without humility the finance department will send budget of another department and i tell them don't bother what a joy it's not because this is this is not my ministry this is god's ministry right i only lead this ministry by the privilege of his election but it is god's ministry but what a joy i tell them don't worry don't worry sometimes i see the concern in the treasurer's face and i'm happy i will never pity myself as to remain at my current level now what are you willing to give up to go up god is speaking to somebody what are you willing to give up to exempt you let me tell you there are people seeds i know is a covenant with god darkness will come and loom around them they will come out like smoke before the fire nothing will happen because the investments they have made for the kingdom is like it says it's, it's like the blood of abel crying there is blood through their sacrifice that is cried to the heavens you try to walk against me you are you are a joker I tell you, I say this with all humility. You are a joker. It's not even me that will fight. It's the altar that is full of seeds. When you hear people cry, say my altar. That thing is not some superstitious thing. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a threshing floor. Bishop Oyedeko, I think it was him or somewhere in living faith. A story was being given about, I think it was a woman who was a tither or a giver in the house of God. And armed robbers came. They were knocking i think they were about to shoot the man or the woman something like that and i think is it the giving booklet or the tight booklet the person brought and dropped it on the ground and said the armed robbers should cross it and come and kill them and they could not do anything 
when you engage them they walk when you imagine them they don't walk when you sit down and wish that they walk they don't walk they must be engaged there are things I have prayed for once that came into my life with speed. There have been times in my life where I cried that God defend me and I prayed once over it. Because God said, no problem. You've got this covered your sins. Do you have a sacrifice like Hezekiah in this time of exemption? Lord, I want a job. Lord, everybody in my family is not making it except me. Thank God I'm a Christian. Have you forgotten that your elder one is a pastor? And still, his wife has not given birth. His, his winning souls. And his wife has not given birth. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hannah gave her home before the child came. And said, God, look, this is not about me. This is about you. Before the child arrives, I've dedicated him. And God says, that's it. I give it to you. I know people here who have sacrificed. Please come, Ejimi. Let me tell you something about Ejimi. When we were preparing for a crusade the first time, among all of us, sorry, I'm having to say this, I know you may not like it. She was the only one among us that time that had a computer, a desktop. Right? Then he used to make shirts. The poster of the first crusade, he designed it by himself with joy as a sacrifice. And then I remember when we, that time, we needed a lot of money and, you know, we're trusting God, you know, people were sowing, but it was a need. And he did two things. Now, I'm not saying you should do it, but he did two things that I will never, never forget. Number one, he carried his laptop, his, his computer. I was just passing through the man and I saw notice. And I saw the description of the laptop. And I met him. I said, why? With Jesus' joy. He said, no, that laptop must go. We need the money. I've told you about our ladies who would climb trees. They were members of the worship team. They were members of welfare. They were members of everything. The ladies, because there was no money to buy firewood then. With joy, they would sing. We still have the videos. That time, people like Victor and Aaron. Aaron was then, please stand up Aaron. Aaron was in charge of protocol. This Aaron you see. Victor, that you see the head of protocol. He was in technical then. That time, they would carry wood on their head. And then dance. Hey, oh. That was the song they used to sing. Hey, oh. Dancing. Hey, oh. My season has come. I remember. Hold on. 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Pouring their heart to the kingdom. Are we together? See, brothers and sisters. I remember his mother. Dear mother of blessed memory. One silver watch. The most expensive watch then I had ever used. Remember when his mom went to London and bought it and said they should give me. The day God asked me to sow that thing, I wanted to die. But I still gave it. Hi, God. But I gave it. I mean, it went. I'm glad it went. I'm glad it went. It would have been the only one I still have till now. The mother, alongside other women in Lagos, mobilized welfare packages. Remember? And they brought all of that. I remember that time, Aaron, we went with two luxurious buses when we were going to for the for the crusade in Abuja. How they mobilized it, I do not even know. We we're praying and planning. Bless you. Thank you, Jimmy. So don't be surprised when his children are intelligent and happy. He served his way to that. His children will never beg for bread. Not when I'm alive. Even if he decides to be careless with his life, it's too late. Not when I'm alive. If he decides today that I will never do anything kingdom again, together with his wife, I say, I, I, I agree for you to be an extra luggage in my life. Let's keep going. When we are talking about Koinonia 10 years from now, will your name be mentioned? No, 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 don't say, don't, don't, this is not an issue of amen. I'm asking you a serious question. Will you say, 
will you say listen listen will you say this speaker came because my seed was there oh i remember the tie that this gentleman used right people giving their hearts and their lives graduates standing as if they are foolish you think these guys are idiots for just standing like this working some of them have come from their various workplaces and it's evening there are people who come in every week from other states it's a sacrifice see let me tell you the, the moment you find yourself complaining about the house of God know that that spirit is there to destroy you because everything God designs in the kingdom is for your good not for his good he's already self-sufficient don't forget El Shaddai he said if you will not praise me it is within my power to raise up stones God don't replace me I'm still available and I'm willing there is such a thing like replacement because now I neither hot or cold I will spill thee from my mouth for as long as I live I will not only praise God my resources must join me and praise God what use do I have having cars when the house of the Lord is not advanced real estate real nonsense the real estate is a kingdom estate traveling on vacation spending a million dollars over a week no except I've done something satisfactorily for the kingdom there is a minimum of amount of offering that I cannot give I will be wicked and unfair to God and to his faithfulness in my life if at this level he has brought me financially I give God certain levels of offering no there is an amount I trust God to get to a target of an amount that I give God never less than it if it is in your heart God will bring it in your heart if at this level I squeeze 1,000 I squeeze 2,000 give God as an offering I'm a wicked person how much do I eat with? how much are my clothes? and then the house of God 2,000 3,000 me? no there are some of you as you are sitting here God has lifted you but your giving has remained so your giving drew you back because he said your giving told God you were not yet qualified and God said if your giving says remain I can't say you should rise remain I have given dangerous seeds in my life I have sown seeds on behalf of my parents for their longevity I have sown seeds on behalf of my children unborn I have sown seeds on behalf of this ministry ask those who know me this ministry is a giving ministry the economic system of koinonia is a crazy system that's why many times I thank God for the way church runs because if it's America I'm sure they would have sold us now say, no, no 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 this and that and that you sow that seed and God gives you faithful people he may not give you money back but he will give you one person that will reduce headache there has not been any case in this ministry that has starved me of sleep to say somebody just came and is stubborn no parents you can use sacrifice to bail every nonsense out of your children when a woman gives birth a man buys a jeep for her which is wonderful right when a child takes first position they fly him to hawaii rather than doing that invest in his future first and say lord this is for my child i buy this speaker for the house of god not nonsense not change not carry torn clothes and say lord i give it in your house you don't give god rubbish no you give god i will not give god anything that will not cost me I look forward to times oh God sees my heart when if I hear any church make noise they want something before they say anything it's provided and God will open doors for you beyond your imagination if your if your purpose of financial prosperity 
is just to wear designers and fly private jets is too small a reason for God to rend the heavens and give you a blessing that you will not have room enough. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, don't do it without me. That's my prayer, Lord. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, if you're changing someone in this nation, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, may, 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 may it never come to a point in my life when my seed stops advancing the kingdom. Please tell me, what else will I be doing with it? Servicing sickness? Servicing poverty? As I'm speaking to you, you see your greed rising. You are trying to believe what I'm saying, but your greed is fighting you. I wish you would push this thing away. No, sir. God wants to help you. I show you the mysteries of blessings that people just rise up. God has said it's the year of trial because you are still going to see people rise up in strange ways. You will see this already happening to people. You are hearing testimonies of people and you say, What exactly are they doing that they are rising? Because in the world system, you have they have to show you the boss and the salary slip. But this one, the, the boss is invisible, the business is by faith, but the reward is the only thing you see. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Sacrifice of your life, your resources. Sometimes when I'm going for ministrations, I'm so tired sleeping in the car or sleeping in the plane. And I'm asking myself, why, why am I doing this? Do I have to do this? And I just remember, it's a privilege. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Take my body, my soul, my money, and breathe on me. He has to take everything. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Listen, if you give God your spirit, you give God your brain and leave your pocket, you are carnal and a liar. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Are we together? My life, my finances and every part of me is open for his scrutiny, his probing and his instructions any day, any time without prior notice belongs to him. We are going to pray. You want to be exempted? There is a price. I know many of you just believe, I will just tell you, be exempted in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, there is a price. I won't lie to you. I fear God too much to deceive you. What is the disadvantage of not being exempted? Write it down. The disadvantage of not being exempted was in the scripture we considered with Cain. He said, all who see me will slay me. He didn't say all men, all things that see me will slay me. The disadvantage, the major disadvantage of not being exempted is that you become a victim of anything and everything. Write it down. You become a victim of anything and everything. Although redeemed, although potentially speaking, you should not be a victim of those things. But you become a victim of anything and everything without hope for recovery. The Bible says, these people have been alienated from the life of God through ignorance. It says, having their understanding darkened, they have been alienated from the life of God. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Listen, it's a risk to give
give birth to a child and not know whether that child will live long or not is too risky. If you've lost a child, I, I, my heart goes out to you. Don't feel bad. But I'm telling you there is a way out. Please listen to me. It's a risk not knowing that you come out today and go back. Remember, there are those who have done it. We are not the first to do it. Remember our song, we are surrounded by many. They have crossed this river. There are men who have lived that long. I looked at my father and my mother one time that I went to greet them and I was just smiling. Do you know one thing I know will keep my parents long? Thanksgiving. If there is anything I've learned about my father, my father is a man who can thank God in a way that will annoy you. He will thank you. know how old people thank God? They thank God for things you consider to be silly. We young people say, please, please, the air you breathe, we thank God. Until the day you breathe through a tube for one month, you stay and breathe in and out, you will say thank you. I've had the opportunity to go to hospitals and to see people. I remember the most recent, I think it was sometime last year, went to see one, went to see one of our ladies. And I went there, close to her bed, I watched somebody die. I watched it, the process. I, at that point, all your greed follows you to the grave. All your seeds that have refused to be given, like the rich fool, the consequences of not using your resources. He said, this day, he sat down and built a bank and put the money and said, my soul, you have money in GT Bank, you have money in Zenith, you have real estate, you are a millionaire, fine rest, and God says, thou fool, your soul today, today will be required of you. Money does not follow men to the grave. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Pay attention and leave. Can you know that your life will be great? Oh, I'm standing today now. One shoe, one bag, one room, one stove, one pot. But I'm sowing my way. Is there a guarantee that tomorrow this loss will work for me? And then I will be the one to be able to turn back and be a blessing. Ask me. I have the answer. That's how we rose. That's why when people are bragging and saying we are this, we are the intellectuals, Harvard this, we went to this, some of us know how we think. We served our way through the mercy of God. And look what God has done today. Do you know why it is marvelous in our eyes? Because it is the Lord's doing. If it's a man's doing, it's too small to be marvelous in your eyes. You are marvelous in your eyes. You are marvelous. You are marvelous. Marvelous. That's what men will begin to say about your life. That you are marvelous. You are marvelous. You are marvelous. any man despise you you may not have it now but you are walking your way sister you don't need to prove to anybody you can buy nothing the word of god will prove itself continue you may not have what it takes wear your one shoe honorably don't borrow anybody's shoe and try to prove any point there's too much truckload of proofs coming in the future i know you are a man of god you have only one type iron it with honor and so Show it to the kingdom. Don't buy suits. You are not wise. If you do that. No. I want to package myself so that I will look like a apostle. You are cheating yourself. You won't look like me soon. Let me just tell you the truth. You will between me and you is a ladder of obedience. You will have to climb it diligently and by the grace of God. My job is to shorten your journey, not take it away. That journey is there. You will walk it. That's why I don't pity people when they cry. Sometimes it's good to let the tears roll. I love you, but I cannot stop your journey. I can only reduce it. 
So sometimes people cry and say, Apostle, nothing is working. And they think I will clean the tears. I say, no, let it flow. Because from, if it does not flow, you will not clean somebody's own. It's not wickedness. There are times I've seen people in situations I want to bless them and the Lord said, no, don't interrupt what I'm doing in their life. They are, I'm, I'm showing them something. And I'm saying, Lord, but they know I can help them. Say, no, no, I'm teaching them trust. Just like it's happening to someone right now. Every door of your helpers are closed. God is saying it's deliberate. Oh. Don't even try to pray for open doors because I'm the one closing it to teach you. I'm teaching you how to rejoice in the storm. I'll praise you in the storm. Remember? I will lift my hands. You are who you are. No matter where I am. Every tear that falls. You hold in your hands. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm preaching a message to you now. Koinonia, don't be ashamed of your tears. Let it flow. Let everyone see you cry so that when you rejoice, they won't say you cheated. You followed the laws. You cried. Mommy, you may cry, but cry in faith. Cry honorably as you sow the seed. There is he that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. I remember the day the Lord asked me to sow 80% of my clothes. Everything, 80%. 80% of everything. Before then, he had asked me to give everything. I've shared with you the testimony. 2007 in Port Harcourt, I carried everything I had home and abroad plus the rechargeable lantern. That was all I had. Laid my hands and prayed on it for three hours, dragged it to church. Then God decided to disgrace me. I was in the overflow outside. When people were giving, God said I should sit down. When people were now giving cars and lands, when they finished, God said you can now go. I was moving. Ladies were looking at me. Guys were looking at me, but I was looking at my future. Oh, yes, I was. Oh, yes, I was. And I went and dropped that thing. The bag was not, I don't even know what they did with it. When they dropped that bag, I went back and sat down. I did it for his house. And the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today, you have entered wealth. Men walk by mysteries. My mother is one of the happiest people around. It's not just because we are alive. It's because of the quality of the children she has. We're discussing with HB today. I bless my parents till the day Jesus comes. Till the day Jesus comes without fail. Whether they obey scriptures or not, I am obedient to them. The same way the priests, they, they receive tithes on behalf of the Levites, have received it for them. May you do that for your parents. Oh. May your obedience today make your parents live long. So that you will take away this stress that is killing parents young now. You see a parent 70 years they can't walk. Because the son at 40 is still coming. Mommy, please can you borrow me 100,000? I say, how much is my pension? He say, just give me. Are you determined to be exempted? We are going to pray. Sister... Take my message seriously. Barrenness is still real. Barrenness does not just come on bad ladies who live wayward lives. There are sincere people. You can start exempting yourself now. Don't wait until the day you get married and try and try and try and nothing happens. Gentleman, don't wait until the day a landlord harasses you. You say, I'll start giving. Start now. Don't wait and say, Apostle, but I've, I've not, I'm not even in a relationship. That's a good time to start sowing that seed. Your seeds can go ahead of your future. Lord, I carry this sacrifice. It's for you. It's for you. Ask Ejimi. He's a witness. What did I do with all my scholarships? Not once did I. I was on two scholarships. I was on mobile. I was on total final health then they used to call it. Then there was no GT bank in Zaria. We we'll go to Kaduna and cash it. Ask him, he's a witness. Everything went for the kingdom. Other people were buying laptop. They were buying this. I used my scholarship for the kingdom. Behind every story, every glory, there is a story. 
don't just sit down desiring men's results this is what this covetousness in the body of christ oh god i like it to this watch i like this i like pastor alpha shoe stop those things that that's not how to claim you claim to obedience obedience we are really going to pray seriously because i want you to be exempted listen to me brothers and sisters the danger that looms around there is real danger psalm 91 tells us there is danger on your children born or unborn from the womb now children get me seriously sick father does not have that sickness mother does not have that sickness from that period of conception to delivery the child comes out with one kind of nonsense i remember one of our ladies who gave birth to one baby he later died you know i remember them meeting me they gave birth to the baby the baby was an investor you know nothing neck will not move hand will not move nothing and i remember the pain the mother used to go through i went back to god and i said no what happened what happened and then i told them i said look Sacrifice is the last bustle in this kingdom. When all else fail, you sacrifice. It's a masterpiece. It will tear that heaven open. I show you a mystery. There are times I've come to certain places that I know some doors will not open. I prayed, they didn't open. I fasted, they didn't open. And I reached out through intelligence. I took seeds that shook heaven and I swung those doors open. Solomon loved the Lord and Solomon said gather me 1,000 animals they said sir are you dashing people he said don't ask me any question bring night slaughter them number one number two he says feel the blood there was a field God kept watching he said let's watch how far he will go when he got to 500 he didn't stop God said my God what is this who is this man who gave him this kind of heart to sacrifice immediately god came to him and said solomon you called me sacrifice has a voice it can call god i'm telling you a mystery some of you are in situations right now your education cannot bring you out it will not bring you out you are in a situation where you are about to break through something the pastor your family with all his anointing did not was not exempted from that trouble bad luck people rise to certain levels the moment they reach there they crash you are number seven out of 13 people nobody's walking and you say i got first class you better switch there is a mystery of exemption everybody that married in your family the lifespan of the marriage was four years they prayed in tongues the marriage is scattered because there is a spirit covenanted authoritatively it takes sacrifice I have done this for myself. I have done this for Koinonia. Hi. Brothers and sisters, you are sitting on blood. You are not just sitting on chairs. You are sitting on tears. You are sitting on sacrifices that brought you. That's what brought you here. It's not Joshua Selman's revelation. Sacrifice. Many people cannot do this thing. It's hard. That's why very few are exempted. I never told you it would be easy. I won't lie to you. There is he that weeps. There are things this man has done. There are sacrifices. I remember one time, I'm sorry I'm having to say, he carried a seed together with his wife. And I knew this was a seed. There are people here who have done it. Sacrifices unto death. A kind of sacrifice that when you finish you say god i hope this thing is right i hope it works i told you about my mother my mother almost brought tears out of my eyes i think it was towards the end of last year she said her death will my mother said if she dies any benefit that will come they should transfer it to koinonia a woman alive covenanting her will for god where is the devil that will kill her? That's the realm when you say, For, for me to live is Christ and to die is Christ. Listen, we rise in this kingdom through sacrifice. We exempt ourselves through sacrifice. Spray
bearing sacrifice. I have watched it open doors for me. I have watched it open doors for people. Great men that you see in this nation. The secret is not just the sacrifice of prayer. Their seeds are gone. If I tell you I don't practice this, I, you, I, it, 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 those close to me know. I am a bank of walking seeds. Nothing just stays idle. I send it to my future. I send it fast. I may cry sending it. Hallelujah. I was talking to a Jimmy and I was telling him, I said, I have so much in the charge card in my phone, I don't know what to do. He asked me how much. I said 41,000. What will I do with a charge card? My phone loaded with 41,000. One naira is not from me. One naira is not from me. What will I do with it? You are not ready for blessings till your seeds please. Oh, you mean you are enjoying? No. No. When blood touches the earth, heaven must answer. Who said your family will never be rich? There is this cause of poverty. Eh, you have been giving, you just give 10,000, 10, give 10 naira. You are not ready to move. Oh, let me tell you the truth. There is a day you come and say, Lord, my children, I served idols. My father served idols. It was in idolatry I gave my life to Christ. I have not even stabilized my stand. I know these altars are fighting me. Therefore, I lift up a fortification. Gather unto me my saints. Psalm 50 verse 5. Please give it to us. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. A covenant with me by sacrifice. Listen. You are at a phase in your life where you should not pity money. Listen. Listen to me. Wasteful spending is bad. But fearful spending is demonic. You don't spend your money buying shoes. Spend your money breaking altars. Spend your money breaking covenants. Leave all those shoes. Don't be foolish. They will come. Prove any point to anybody. Lord, I have watched my elder brother rob bishops. I watched my elder sister. She got married and got mad this first day. This will not happen. Oh, I know it will not happen because I'm in Koinonia. If you don't do what Koinonia people are doing, you will be surprised. I'm showing you the secrets. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. They will sit with you like this and tell you they are coming to jail you. Coming to take you to prison. Coming to take you to this. You cannot pay your rent. Your sacrifice. That's when you see that sacrifice is powerful. There is a lady, I don't know if she testified. I have the text message in my phone. I shared it with you, Jimmy. Two days ago, her mother practically died. And the girl said, no, 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 no way. And she called, I think she may be a worker or so. She sent a text. I told her to come and share it by herself. I don't know if she was a worker or whatever. And do you know, this lady said, she said, Kai, I can't use my faith again. Everything went bad. And she sent me a text. You know what she sent? She said, Apostle, I can't use faith. I use the covenant you have with God. Do you know what I did? I put the text. I told you what I did. I put the text and I threw it on my bed. I said, Lord, look at what this lady said. Her mother came back to life yesterday. Yesterday. The text is still in my phone. Take over. Take over. Lord, I come to the end. The end of greed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come. Listen. Listen. Till today, they serve idols in my village. Till today, they serve idols in my village. With the reign of Christianity, you are not the first to have causes. I told you demons used to oppress me. As a man of God, anointed 
healing the sick I went to pastors I said what is this thing that demons come to press me in the night They said I don't have faith I said what is faith I've done everything they define faith to be Brothers and sisters there are certain altars That after you have prayed I wish what I'm telling you is a lie I know you are in Christ But I show you the mysteries behind the pain of men There are some seeds Alone That will break some altars And smash it to pieces And in one year One year When it was time to save man Jesus Christ God did not make a pronouncement He dragged his son When the son went to God God when his blood beat that's why no power the only power that can overcome god is the power that can give a son with that same condition any other deity that can turn a god to become a son and sacrifice him will have more power than god he looked around the heavens and found no one greater and he swore by himself the seed shall bruise the head Please look at me. Look at me. If I have preached and I have told you a lie, may a curse come upon me and my children that are unborn. If I have manipulated you for any gain, listen, I don't care who you are, how old you are, what you read. If you want to rise above witchcraft in this life, you want to rise and match the head of the devil, it's not just your prayer and your voice. There is he that weep. You don't just drop money like that. The sacrifice is not in the money, it's the value on you. And tie it with an expectation. Lord, they say my womb will not open. You have seen three of your sisters barring. You are there jumping up and down and saying, I am. They are, they are not barring because they are devils. They just do not understand the mystery of exemption. Koinonia is sitting upon this mystery. That's why you see us rising by His grace. Those who don't understand will just think, Oh, these people are just lucky. There's no luck in this thing. Oh. There's no luck in this thing. You were engaged. There is a mystery. There is a mystery that exempts men from all of these vicissitudes of life. Please, I want you to believe it in the name of the Lord God of heaven. And open up yourself. Because we are going to do some serious prayers. This night is not a night to just joke around. We came to pray. Within the few minutes we have to pray. I like you to pray. Remember we are exempting ourselves. Rise up on your feet and in the next five minutes. I want you to blast in tongues. As to one who is ready for exemption. Lord it can't continue like this. Lord my family cannot continue like this. Pray! Hallelujah. 
say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud as and serious. Please be serious. Say, Lord Jesus. The yoke of suffering. Say the yoke of suffering. The yoke of hardship upon my family and upon my life. I command that it be lifted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift it out of your life. There is such a yoke upon families. Doesn't matter whether you are working or not. Doesn't matter whether you are in business or not. You keep blaming other people. Whereas the trouble is from you. Come on, believers, pray. Come on, believers, pray. So pray, so pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I want you to pray three major areas in your life where that exemption must show immediately. Listen, there are many areas. Choose three areas in your life and pray. This is an instruction. Pray it with your heart. Mention it. Lord, this unfruitfulness. This, 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 my family. Mention them if it's your finances. And blast in tongues. And say it must leave. It must leave. Prophesy. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. Exemption in this year of trial. I provoke you. In this year of trial, I provoke you by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, the attachment I have to money, the attachment I have to material things that will not let me sacrifice, take it away from my life. Please pray. You really need that separation. Carnality. 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 Attachment to money, attachment to material things that will not allow you release with lot resources. The fear of lack, the fear of resources finishing. Cause it, cause it. Malakata prasta da barado shubris, ende prata la koto shubris kare. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to challenge you to do something. This is not my culture, but I want to challenge you. 
whatever seed you have, anything, maybe some financial resources, you can help somebody with it if you have more. It's not about, you always hear me say this, it's not, we're a very blessed ministry. I say it with all humility, we are a very, very, very blessed ministry. His grace has been faithful. So, this is not about money, but if if you have something that you can connect with, please, that no matter how small, no matter how little, connect with something. I want to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer. Connect with something. Help somebody. Don't sit down greedily saying, I don't know him. Take over. Over, I have come to the end of my step. Take over, tell over. I have come to the end of my step. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have come to the end of my step. Hallelujah, sweetheart, come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Finance department, somebody, a representative should stand for Koinonia in this prayer we are praying. Because we are also a ministry that believes the word. So we are not just telling people to do it. Stand on behalf of the ministry. We are all going to, so I want to pray. And the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. I want to pray. Please, listen. Don't give anything foolishly. Don't give anything emotionally. Are we together? Don't just carry your phones and give emotionally and carry. Please make sure everything you do is based on understanding. You don't have a seed, you are not going to help. Are we together? If you don't have a seed, you can touch, make contact with somebody who has a seed. That way at least it can help. It's not, it's not about money, brothers and sisters. This is one of the biggest mysteries behind the life of this man you see standing before you. My life is a fountain of blood that keeps. You don't kill a dead man. The sacrifice already killed him. I have enjoyed the blessings of God in my life. I have seen doors open in strange ways. I have seen access. Many people think it's because I'm a man of God. No. It's because of the principle of the word. I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we stand before you tonight in total faith. You are teaching us in this house the mystery of exemption. And Lord, you have taught us how kingdom service can exempt men. We are not doing this emotionally. We are not doing this to coerce ourselves. But Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that by this seed I prophesy upon lives, upon destinies from tonight a dimension of breakthrough you have never seen. I release it upon you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that any charm, any altar, any pronouncement, any yoke, I don't care how long it has lingered around your life. You have prayed, it has refused to go. You have fasted, it has refused to go. You even danced and it refused to go. I prophesy, may your seed answer tonight. 
May your seed answer tonight. Lord, according to Psalms 50 verse 5, He said, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I pray, if I be sent of God, I stand up God upon this altar in the name of Jesus. As you are holding this key, I command judgment in the camp of the enemy. Judgment right now in the camp of the enemy. May the fire fall on your feet. 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 Sabakata la koto so prekete. Legete kata. The Lord God that answers by fire, the God of Elijah that descends upon the sacrifice in the name of Jesus, as it burns this sacrifice, it burns every altar, as it burns this sacrifice, it burns every charm, it burns every pronouncement, it burns every pronouncement. Therefore, by this seed, I prophesy, be exempted from death, be exempted from luck, be exempted from struggling, be exempted from disfavor, be exempted. I don't care how it has been in your family, by this seed, I change the patterns tonight. I change the patterns tonight. I change the patterns tonight. Everything called dead in your life. Everything that has refused to resurrect in your life. Everything keeping you at the same level. You are growing older, but you are not moving. The truth is you are not making progress. The last three years you have been at the same place. I push you forward now. By the power of prophecy, I push you forward now. I push you forward now. Anyone here already marked for death? Cain said, This punishment is too much. I don't care what law you broke, I don't care what access you gave the devil. It was Cain that said, My punishment is too much. He said, Any man that sees me, any poverty that sees me, anything that sees me will slay me. And God said, I put a mark, I prophesy upon you right now. Let me tell you, some of you will feel a physical hand, a physical hand upon your forehead, putting a mark in the name of Jesus. I invoke the covenant of this office that I stand upon. I invoke the covenant of this office that I stand. If I be a man of God, at the count of three, let that mark come upon men. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. That mark of exemption. That mark of exemption over death. Over poverty, over disfavor, over closed heavens. I shall put a separation between those that serve here and those that do not serve him. Where your personal faith has, has failed and is limited. Where your prayer life is limited. I put your resolve by the sacrifice upon this altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive results you know are bigger than you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore I declare. Whatever closed the heavens over you. 
so that nothing to celebrate comes you are serving god but there's nothing to say god has been faithful i decree and declare in the name of jesus before miracle service next week thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media